it's 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 all good. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the October 21, 2022 virtual meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Brian Sanchez. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm the acting chairman of the ZBA. Like the last few months, I wanna start this meeting out by prefacing that we have been seeing a lot of photographs and the proposed findings of fact that are not helpful. We need photographs of more than just the subject property and definitely more than just a photograph showing your posted notice. For variations, when we say we want photographs of the entire block, we mean the entire block. That means both sides of the street. For special use expert reports, we need the photographs to be in color and visible. We've been receiving badly photocopied reports where we can't see the photographs. This is not helpful and makes our pre-review a lot less efficient. <clears throat> and now on with the meeting. First, pursuant to my powers as acting chairman, I hear bit by designate member Ann McDonald to take Angela Brooks' place as a regular member at today's meeting. Ann, thank you for being with us today. Second, I'd like to take judicial notice of the fact that on October 14, 2022, the governor of the state of Illinois signed a disaster proclamation declaring all counties of the state of Illinois a disaster area due to the COVID-19 public health emergency. This disaster proclamation is in effect until November 14, 2022. Thus, Section 7E1 of the Open Meetings Act has been met. Third, I'm making a determination pursuant to Section 72 of the Open Meetings Act that an in-person meeting of the board is not practical or prudent. Similarly, I am also making a determination pursuant to Section 7E5 that because of the disaster declared by the governor, it is unfeasible for at least one member of the Zoning Board of Appeals or its chief administrative officer or its chief legal officer to be physically present at the meeting place in as much as there is no physical meeting place. <coughs> Fourth, this meeting will operate under the emergency rules governing the conduct of remote public board meetings and provisions for remote public participation, which are posted to the board's website. In line with these emergency rules, today's meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals is a virtual meeting that is being simulcast to the general public via live streaming. It is also being recorded. We've established these virtual hearings in keeping with the governor, the General Assembly, the mayor, and the city council's goal to continue government functions while maintaining transparency and public safety. But there are technical limitations to this format that we must collectively manage, particularly with respect to the presentation of new evidence during a hearing. The ability for applicants and objectors to resolve objections or amend proposals during the hearing and the participation of large numbers of people. As a result, any material to be presented to the board, whether by applicants or members of the public, was required to be submitted in advance of the meeting. <clears throat> For those of you who do not regularly appear before the board, I will go over a few things uh, for those who will be participating in the meeting. One, we are operating under the emergency rules. So for all applicants, objectors, and their attorneys, if you did not send us your exhibits by the cutoff date and time, you will not be able to reference them. Two, all participants will be listed as attendees within the Zoom meeting until your matter is called. At that time, we will promote you to a panelist. Please accept the promotion. Three, if you are here in opposition or support of a matter, when your matter is called, please raise your hand so that we know you are here and may transfer you to a panelist. If you are listening to this meeting via phone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Four, once you are set as a panelist, please present your case. Board staff will be presenting the PowerPoint exhibits for everyone as we normally do, so you will not need to manage sharing your screen. <coughs> Five, please be mindful of background noise and please mute yourself when you are not speaking at all times, including now. Six, Please note that we have a court reporter preparing our record, so it is important that two people not speak at the same time. You might see me muting someone if that happens. Seven, if you are an active participant in this meeting, please do not watch the live stream. This will cause audio interference. Let me repeat that. If you are an active participant in this meeting, please do not watch the live stream in tandem. Eight, please make sure you identify yourself when you are speaking. 
This goes for attorneys, applicants, members of the public, and board commissioners. Since all of us are remote, we and our court reporters cannot always see who is talking at any given time. I will also be administering oaths for each witness individually to accommodate for this. When I do swear you in, please spell your last name. Nine, if an applicant or anyone in opposition or support to the application has any technical issues presenting their case and is unable to proceed, we will attempt to continue the matter until the end of the call to create time to resolve the issues. If unsuccessful, we will continue the matter until a subsequent meeting. <laughs> 10, after your matter or matters are concluded, please leave the Zoom meeting to ensure adequate capacity. If you are interested in continuing to watch our meeting, which I hope you are, I encourage you to watch the live stream, which is accessible from our website. Now, I'd like to call this virtual meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals to order. I will take a roll call vote to establish quorum. Commissioners, after I call your name and you state that you are present, please verify that you can hear and see me. Commissioner Esposito. Present, I can hear and see you. Commissioner McDonald. Present, I can hear and see you. Commissioner Toya. Present, and I can hear and see you. I am present, so quorum is established. The minutes of last month's meeting have been distributed. Unless there are corrections, I move that we approve the minutes as distributed. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The minutes are approved. I move that we approve today's agenda. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The agenda has been approved. Now, before I go on to take continuances and withdrawals, I'm going to turn the floor over to the new 43rd Ward Alderman, Timmy Knudsen. Thanks very much, Commissioner. Um, and good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for letting me steal a minute of your time today. <clears throat> My name is Timmy Knudsen. I used to be the chair of the Zoning Board, Board of Appeals, but one month ago, I was confirmed on the Chicago City Council as Alder of the 43rd Ward, at which point I immediately resigned from the ZBA. Um, uh, I just wanted to pop on this morning to say goodbye because it all happened so quickly. At least that's just goodbye from wearing this hat. And also I wanted to say thank you to several people on this call, really a lot of people who worked so hard to make this important and independent board tick. My time on ZBA was that of virtual chair. Um, I always looked forward to hosting an in-person meeting, but here we are still on Zoom. Um, and as, as with the virtual setting came new important issues like ensuring everyone seeking to appear in front of the board had access to Wi-Fi or a computer. Behind the scenes, the staff and ZBA leaders are doing a ton of important work to ensure that access. In addition, um, the team has been working to streamline what can be a lengthy and expensive process. Truthfully, I learned a ton chairing this board and their lessons I'm, I'm really grateful to be taking forward on the city council. ZBA is a very impactful board. And so I wanna thank all the experts on here today. You know, my friend, Sam Toya, thank you so much. Um, Zurich Esposito, Brian Sanchez, Angela Brooks, in addition to the alternate members and McDonald by Shali Rao. Um, the whole group, I've learned so much from you in often what became marathon meetings, doing important work into the evening. Uh, so much work goes into each meeting, the planning ahead of time all month. And for that, I just wanna give a massive thanks to Victor. Victor Reza, you're incredible. Janine Klitsch Jensen and Jeanette Velazquez, you always put a smile on my face and also kept me truthfully organized, which is a, is a hard task to do. Um, Francis Cahill, Nancy Radzovich, our court reporters, um, this meeting couldn't be done, out, done with any, without any of you. Also, I wanna give a thanks to Zoning Administrator Patrick Murphy and Commissioner Maurice Cox, who I look forward to working with very closely going forward in this new role. All of you taught me how to do this role, and for that, I'm so appreciative. 
And to everyone who frequents this meeting, um, our frequent flyers, be it the lawyers or, or developers, I look forward to getting to know you with a different lens. Now I'll stop thinking so that Acting Chair Sanchez can get to the fun that is continuances and withdrawals. I always um, really enjoyed that chapter of the meeting, but truthfully, thank you all. Um, I can't wait to, to get to know you from this different role and serving as chair of ZBA has been an incredible experience for me. So thanks, Brian. Well, thank you, Alderman. Uh, I, I want to say that it, it's been a pleasure uh, working with you the last two years and getting to know you. Uh, I wish you the best of luck as Alderman, and I look forward to uh, seeing you in your different capacity uh, come for us, come before us when you have uh, zoning issues in your ward. Yeah, I think you'll be seeing me a lot, so beware. <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good meeting. All right. And now we are going to move to continuances and withdrawals. Okay, so we've got some. Uh, Victor, do you do you want to speak on 294-22-S? Uh, yes, Chairman. This is Victor Reese, I'm the manager for the zoning board. Um, in preparing for the meeting, um, we discovered that I inadvertently omitted to um, provide the co-applicant's name, uh, Biofarm, on the notices that were published and that were mailed out to the surrounding property owners within 250 feet. So I'm asking for a one month continuance so that I can republish an amended notice and remail an amended notice to the surrounding property owners that are entitled to um, notice for this subject property. Do we have someone for the applicant? Yeah, I believe uh, Amy Degnan is on. I just promoted her. And then we also have an objector, Robert Brown, that is, um, on as well. Hi, my name is Amy Degan. I'm with the law firm Georges and Sinewiki on behalf of the applicant. Yes, uh, and uh, so there's uh, been a request. It's really on the board's own motion to um, continue it to November 18th, uh, 2022 to correct uh, a clerical uh, error uh, regarding the notice. Uh, do you have any objection? We do not have an objection and we agree with the continuance. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, calendar number 294-22-S will be continued to- Excuse November. me, Matt, there's an objector. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown, do you have an, do you have an objection to the continuance? Uh, yes, I do. And, and uh, I just, just a quick comment. Uh, uh, if I've the comment, hold process. on, hold on, hold up, hold up. If the right. comment relates to the continuance, I'm I'm okay with hearing it. Oh, I don't want to hear the substance of the matter. No, no, no. I was just going to say thank you to the board. That's all. Oh, it's a, for, for all your hard work, for all your hard work on a on a beautiful Friday. That's that oh. was my comment. So uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um. So um. It, it's it's the opinion of the objectors that a continuance issued on this would be highly prejudicial. Um, to the objectors, we actually believe, and we would intend to make the argument in the hearing today, that there really is only one applicant, and granting the continuance on the grounds of this clerical error actually prejudges the validity of the arguments without our ability to introduce that evidence. We were not given any notice until now that the board had intended to issue a motion for a continuance while the applicant through ex parte um, conversations was giving well advanced notice to this. We actually learned of this through a news reporter who had a, who spoke with the public affairs person for the applicant. So we've not been given you know, the same notice and consideration that the applicant got through ex parte discussions prior to the meeting this morning. The objectors are not paid consultants, as you know. Several objectors have taken time off their work today in order to participate in the public hearing. That's both a right and a civic duty. 
A continuance places an unnecessary financial and personal burden, which will likely prevent them from taking another day off, thereby advantaging the applicant at the expense of the public interest. I understand that there's a, a clerical error from, from that perspective. We would like the opportunity in the hearing today to demonstrate that there truly is only one applicant and the facts will bear that out. I think it's within, I, I'll, I'll stop, I guess I'll stop there. Okay, uh, so- this is, a, this is a prejudice, we just think it's a very highly prejudicial decision. This has been a David and Goliath from the very beginning. There's multiple cases where the, where the community has been squashed and censored in the last several months on this, and this would be yet another opportunity to, um, to squash objectors who've taken time off work today to do this, um, and also to prejudice uh, one of our key arguments. Okay, well, I hear your objection. It's overruled. Uh, we're going to continue to this matter to, to uh, this is 294 22 S will be continued to November 18, 2022. No further notice will be given. Um, it, this is a, a notice issue. We have to comply with the zoning ordinance, and we are going to do that. Any other uh, continuances or withdrawals? Somebody here on 295-22-S? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, ah, I Councilor am. Augustine. Um, good morning. Good um, morning. So yes, I am um, the attorney on 295-22-S. Applicant is Jairus Blade Masters 1 LLC, special use for a barbershop. Um, I... Um, got into this matter late and in working with the ZBA, we realized that the address on the application, the notice, as well as the city's notice was incorrect. Um, 6144 is not the address, it actually should be 6142. So um, we've agreed to uh, withdraw the application and then refile. So I'm here today to um, withdraw the um, application. Okay. So uh, 295-22-S is hereby withdrawn. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, is somebody here for 354-22-Z? Uh, Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Councilor Barton. Um, I'm here on behalf of the applicant for 354-22-S. The, uh, the applicant is Nikola Zatkovic, and he will be withdrawing this case. This okay. is uh, on the bottom of page three, address 838 North Hermitage. Yeah. And what was the case number again? It's 354-22-Z. Z. Thank you. Okay, so 354-22-Z will be withdrawn. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other continuances or withdrawals? If so, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, hearing none, we are going to move to the regular call. Uh, before we start, I do want to point out that we have a very full call today. Uh, the board has reviewed everything submitted for the matters that are up today. Uh, for matters where we do not have objectors, <coughs> I do want the attorneys to do the short form. That is, get your witnesses on to affirm their affidavits, and then we'll open it up for board questions. Obviously, if your matter has objectors, we will need you to put your case on in full so the objectors can hear all testimony. Okay, so we are starting with calendar number 320-21-S. This is 902 West 119th Street. Good morning. Good morning, Counselor. Tamara Walker for um, the matter you just mentioned, 902 West 19th Street. And if there are any uh, ob objectors, please raise your hand and we'll get you promoted. <clears throat> I'm not seeing any, Councillor Walker. Uh, please proceed. This is an uh, extension request? Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, it is, Chairman. 
Um, my client, Anna Stroud, is also present on the call, but I don't see her promoted as a oh, panel. Let me see here. Uh, I don't see Anna Stroud unless she's dialing in from a phone number. Mm, I know she logged in this morning. I spoke with her this morning. Y yes, she's on the phone. Uh, okay. okay. Please press Thank star you. six to unmute. Okay. I think she's with us. Anna, are you there? Star six to unmute. She's muted right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I, I see her now. I can see her as well. Uh, she's just muted. Um, Ms. Stroud, if you can hit star six, you should be able to unmute. <clears throat> I don't know if she's having technical difficulties or mm. I'll try texting. I mean, I can present what was presented as far as the extension packet. Sure. But I, I would assume that the chairman would want to hear my client's testimony on that matter. However, we're open to proceed differently. I've, I've, I've well, yeah, I mean, we probably should um, at least get her sworn in. We do, yeah. we do need her, we do need her here. Okay. Ms. Stroud, you should press, you said star six, seven? Star six. Star six to unmute. I just text her the same. Good morning. Oh, there she is. There we oh. go. Hi, I'm Miss Stroud. This is uh, Commissioner Sanchez. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. good I'm good. Uh, all right, we're 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 gonna begin here. Uh, but before we do, could you state your name and address, please? Anna Stroud, 500 East 33rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60616, apartment 1406. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. Councilor Walker, please proceed. Thank you. Ms. Stroud, please state your full name for the record. Anna Stroud. And we made an application to for the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special use to establish a tavern at 902 West 119th Street, correct? Yes. And that resolution was approved on September 17th. 2021 notice mailed out on October 18, 2021. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And the reason that we've had to make a special use extension request is because you had some delays in getting your building permit issued. Is that correct? Yes. And when I say building permit, I'm referring to the building permit at 902 West 119th Street. So now that permit has subsequently issued. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. What were the reasons for the delay in the permit? If you can, I couldn't get in touch. I couldn't get in touch with uh, Brian McNichols, the architect, for about six or seven months, or probably a little longer. Okay. I emailed. I emailed. I phoned, and it was six or seven months, so I couldn't get in touch with him, so I can move forward with anything. Did you ultimately file a complaint against your architect because of his non-responsiveness? <laughs> Yes, I did. I filed um, several complaints. And then once I filed the complaints, he did respond and called. Okay. And so you were able to eventually get the uh, plans approved and stamped and move forward and your building permit has now issued. Is that correct? Yes. Is work taking place at the subject property now pursuant to yes. the permit? Okay. Yes. And you need the special use to remain in place in order to operate your business uh, per the application we originally made. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Nothing further, Chairman. Uh, what's the uh, the amount of the extent, extension you're seeking? Oh, the time period? Yeah. We would need, let's see. 
So I want to make sure that I'm clear. If she's granted a special use to establish a tavern, that would extend until the tavern is established and operational. Is that correct? I'm sorry, what was what was the question? Okay, so her special use was for her to establish a tavern at the subject location. Mm -hmm. So what I'm stating is that now that that's underway, once the build out is complete, the tavern will be free to operate from that special use. So that's going to kind of determine how long I'm, I'm going to ask for. Well, you, you can you can get up to one year. Okay, so if you want to request uh, up to up to a year. Got you. So I request a year. Okay. Any questions from the board? I, I think we have everything we need, Counselor. We'll take right. it under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. And the decision is at the end of the meeting. Is that correct? Yeah, we vote at the end of the meeting, and uh, and we'll come. We'll go into closed session to vote or to to discuss, and then we will come back to vote. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stroud. And thank you both. Y'all have thank a great you. evening. Have you as well. Evening. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you guys can enjoy this weather at some point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, next up is calendar number 342-22-S. This is 4024 West Madison. I can see we've got uh, Nancy uh, from DPD on. Uh, Nancy, uh, I'm sure you're here to read the uh, department's recommendation. Let's see if we've got the applicant. And if there are any objectors for this matter, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. One second, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Uh, we can hear you now, yes. Okay, thank you. Just, just give me one second here. Okay, I can see we've got uh, Tiffany Steen. Do we also have uh, Reggie Sanders? I don't see Randy, uh, uh, Mr. Sanders. Ms. Steen, is, 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 are you expecting Reggie Sanders? No, I'm not. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, first, uh, let's get to the uh, DPD recommendation. Nancy, could you uh, state your name and role, please? Absolutely. Nancy Razovich, Assistant Commissioner with the Zoning Bureau in the Department of Planning and Development. And uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Great. Uh, go ahead and uh, read the recommendation. Okay. This is for uh, 342-22-S. Excuse me, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair salon. The department finds that this proposal complies with all applicable standards of the zoning ordinance, is in the interest of public convenience, and will not have a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood. The department also finds the hair salon will be compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of building scale and design and operating characteristics. Lastly, the proposed hair salon is designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Steen, what brings you here today? 
I'd like to open my own salon. I've been doing hair for 12 years now. So I'd like to open my salon. Okay. Yeah, so you've been doing it for 12 years. Uh, what kind of um, hours are you uh, planning to hold? We, it's, they're like right now, we're still, we're trying to get the hair business into the banker's hour. So right now we're doing from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and that's on the weekends, but on the weekday from Monday to Thursday, we're from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. When you say right now, you're you're not you're not operating at uh, the location yet, are you? No, I ha the the salon has a retail uh, space in it as well. So right now we do operate as retail. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you're just not um, uh, doing right. It we yet. can't. Nope, not yet. Okay. Uh, how many uh, em employees uh, uh, are gonna are do you anticipate having? It's set up to house uh, a total of eight hairstylists. Okay. Um, you know what? Did I did I swear you in at the beginning? No. No. Let, let me let me do that. Uh, could okay. you state your name and address, please? My home address. Yes. My name is Tiffany Steen, and I live at 225 Wood Glen Lane, uh, Oak Brook, Illinois, 60523. And, and go ahead. do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. And uh, before I swore you in, the questions uh, that I asked you and the, and the answers that you gave, th those were all truthful, correct? Yes, truthful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any um, questions from the board? I think we have everything uh, we need for this one, Ms. Steen. We're gonna take it under advisement. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we are now moving to calendar number 343-22-Z. This is uh, 5552 to 56 West Edmonds. There are any um, objectors uh, or supporters, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. Let's see, we've got uh, Councillor Kolpak, we've got Tim Kelly, and we have Kirk Alexikos. So it looks like we have everybody. Uh, and I'm not seeing any objectors. Please raise your hand if, if you're here in support or objection, we'll get you promoted. Uh, but I'm not seeing any, uh, Councillor Kolpak. Uh, so please proceed. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. My name is Paul Kolpak with offices at 6767 North Milwaukee Avenue. I represent the applicant, Mr. Timothy Kelly. Um, we're requesting variation to expand the existing floor area by 956 square feet for a proposed fourth addition to a existing three-story, eight-unit building with eight parking spaces. Uh, Mr. Chairman, since there are no objectors, would, would you like me to do a brief overview or just go right to the you can do a you can do a very brief overview, but then just get um, your uh, witnesses to swear to their affidavits. That's fine. Thank you. The existing three story eight unit building uh, is currently in an RT four zoning district in Jefferson Park. Two dwelling units in the lower garden level, three dwelling units on the second floor, and three three dwelling units on the upper level. Uh, the eight unit building is currently occupied by the Blessed Virgin Mary Sisterhood. Uh, each dwelling unit consists either of one or two bedrooms. This building was built in 1961 and offers very little outside uh, open space like a balcony or um, patio or, or any decks. The purpose of this uh, application is not to add additional units, uh, but rather to provide these amenities for the sisters. There would be no uh, no increase uh, 
will meet the standards of the height uh, under the RT4 district. We need the 15%, which are, is allowed under section 1713, 1101G, that if the building is uh, more than 50 years old, we can request a 15% increase in the FAR. Uh, if this is passed, we will meet that criteria. At this point, I would just like to call my first witness, Mr. Kelly. Yes, you, Mr. Kelly, you, could you state your name and address, please? Sure. <clears throat> Timothy Kelly, 4805 North Claremont Avenue, Unit 403, Chicago 60625. Do you swear Mr. or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Mr. Kelly, uh, you prepared a findings of fact and if you were asked to testify further, you'd testify in, in substantial conformity to those findings of fact. Is that correct? Yes. No further questions for Mr. Kelly. Sure. Just one uh, one question for Mr. Kelly. Uh, are, are you the? Uh, could you tell us what your role is with um, with regard to Kirkwood Investment Group LLC? I'm the sole shareholder of it. Okay. Of You're the, the manager of the LLC. Correct. Okay. All right, uh, let's go to uh, Mr. Alexikos. Could you state your name and address, please? Hello, my name is Kirk Alexakos, 5731 North Central Avenue in Chicago, 60646. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. So you are a, a licensed architect in the state of Illinois, is that correct? That is correct. And you have visited this property and observed it, is that correct? And yes, you have filed an affidavit with uh, this petition. And if you were asked to testify, you testify in substantial conformity to that affidavit, is that correct? Yes, I have, and yes, I will. I have no further questions for my architect. Uh, I've got one question. Um, the hardship here is the existing building. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, basically, the existing building, didn't, when it was built back in the early 60s, did not contemplate any outdoor amenities whatsoever. The sisters are pretty much confined in their building. This would give them uh, the ability to uh, have some outdoor area and some more uh, available living area uh, for this building. Any uh, questions from the board? Hearing none, we will take this matter under advisement. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, moving along to calendar number 344-22-Z. This is 6950 North Oleander. Please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. If you're here in support or objection, please raise your hand. Do we have Maureen Gutierrez? Yes, I'm here. I'm oh, excellent, excellent. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, just just you, is that correct? It's my husband, also Paul. Okay. Um, well, let's let's. Uh, I'll swear both of you in. Um, Maureen, could you um, state your name and address, please? Sure, Maureen Gutierrez, 6950 North Oleander, Chicago, 60631. Uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Uh, okay, and, and Paul, could you state your name and address, please? Uh, sure, uh, Paul Gutierrez, 6950 North Oleander, Chicago, Illinois, 60631. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Okay, uh, tell us what uh, brings you here today. 
Uh, well, our, our, my wife and I want to request a variation to reduce the combined setback uh, from the required 16.5 to 13.43, and the front setback from 30.60 to 26.56 uh, on our property to add a second story addition uh, to our single story home. Okay. Uh, right and now we're, we're only one of two. Uh, homes on the block that's a single story. So uh, we believe that our plans uh, will keep uh, a look consistent with our neighbors. Uh, we'll give an additional space uh, and bedrooms for a family of five. Uh, we spoke to several of our neighbors. Uh, they all have positive feedback on our plans. And we also have letters from our immediate neighbors on the north and south side of the property uh, in support of our plans. Um, we purchased a house in May of 2019. Uh, we actually applied for variance back in 2020. Uh, we put everything on hold. Uh, so we're, we're trying to start it up again. We were approved. We were just, in, when COVID hit, we decided to wait and see what was happening with the pricing. Yeah, material costs got pretty expensive. Okay, so you've you've spoken with the neighbors to on, on both sides? Yes. Uh, yes. And they are, uh, in, a, in approval or have no objection? No, no objection. They gave actually support letters for us. Now, as far as the, you know, one of the things that we look at is is the hardship. If if we don't grant the variation, can you can you tell us what what the hardship is? Uh, well, when we we sold our old home, it was a much bigger home, but in a different area. So when we purchased the home, it is much smaller than than what we had. Uh, we always had the intention of putting an addition, hopefully, to add uh, individual bedrooms for our kids. Uh, right now, we have three bedrooms. We, we really do need a fourth. Uh, not to mention that the, the space is uh, getting cramped now that they're getting a little older. Uh, it's a half basement. Uh, so the main floor area is, is uh, smaller than, than what we would like. Mm -hmm. uh, but, there's, there's a lot of work right now also to be done in the house, um, knowing that buying the house going in. So we're just kind of putting bandages on the house right now until we're able to. It needs a lot of updating. Yeah, uh, uh, we need plumbing, everything. It's a lot of issues with that. Electrical. Is is the existing home in encroaching in any of the setbacks? No, uh, we're just going straight up. Uh, well, the side setback is the, when the, the issue was with the variance, um, but we're going just straight up. We're, we're coming forward in the front just to meet the house is an odd shape where it's, um, we're just on the two end sides. We're just meeting to the front of the house where it's already existing. Okay. So are you, are you, are you, um, are you just building up from the existing walls of the of the first floor? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, except the front two corners are, are right now recessed in uh, about six feet, so we're just bringing them back forward to match the the front. Okay. So, uh, are there any questions from the board? Yeah, I just had one question. Uh, Paul and Maureen Gutierrez, uh, Commissioner McDonald, did you consider any other um, designs or uh, was there a reason, particular reason you settled on this one that needed the uh, additional setback relief? Uh, no, we, we... Our, old, our old design, we were going back further and down into the basement, but as far as cost wise, we kind of downsized our plans just to go up with um, instead to make more room that way. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right, I think we have everything we need. We'll take this one under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up is 345-22-S and 346-22-S. Uh, if you're here on these matters, please raise your hand. We'll get you promoted.
Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Let me just get everybody up here. Uh, also, okay. chairman, uh, chairman, just want to remind that anyone who's on the phone can press star nine to raise their hand in Zoom. Star nine. Thank you, Kamal. That's star nine uh, to raise your hand uh, if you're on the phone. I have two brief questions, if you don't mind. It's my first time doing this. So first question is, am I allowed to make a statement? to go into record. And the next question is, if I have objectors, may I ask them questions? Uh, the, the, yes, you're, so we're gonna get there, but um, yes, you're gonna have the opportunity to make your case. Uh, you're you're uh, pro se, right? You, you don't have an attorney? Yes, I don't have an attorney. Yeah, so you'll, you'll be able to put on your case. Uh, I'll swear you in, you'll be able to put on your case. And then if there's objectors, the objectors will then, um, state their objections they'll they'll be able to ask you questions you can ask them questions so there will be a, a, a full a full dialogue um but i kind of want to figure out who everyone is on this one i can see we have uh alderman mitchell um janelle shelton yes are, How are you in support or uh objection I'm actually in support of the applicant. I'm the expediter, so I'm the one that's dealing with the uh, the build out and everything afterwards too. Okay. Okay. Great. We will. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to you. I'm just going to go okay. and, and figure out who uh, who everyone is. Um, you can see, um, Brent uh, Baldwin. Are you here in support or objection? Uh, I'm in support. I'm the appraiser um, for the affidavit. Okay. Okay. Great. Let's see. Attorney M uh, Meredith Hammer. Hi, this is Attorney Meredith Hammer. Hi, are, are you here in support or objection? Objection. Okay. Objection. Okay. Okay. Uh, Janice, could you unmute, please? Good morning. Hi, good morning. Are you here in support or objection? Objection. Okay. Um, uh, Sh Shanna, could you unmute, please? Hi, it's Shanna. Are you here in support or objection? Support. Okay. Uh, Sharon Lewis? Yes. Are you I'm here? in support or objection? Objection. Okay, thank you. Uh, Veronica Kyle. Hi, I'm here, I'm a concern objector. Okay, okay. Uh, da, da, da. Is there anyone else, have I, oh, I can see there's a couple more hands raised. Yeah. All right, I'm promoting the hands raised to panelists. Please accept the promotion. Okay, we've got the the third district commander. Uh, are you are you here in support or objection? Objection. Okay. And let's see. I've got uh, Captain uh, R Ramirez. Are you here in support or objection? 
you're you're muted. I'm sorry, uh, objection. Okay, uh, Melanie Campbell, supporter objection. You're you're muted as well. Melanie Campbell. I am in objection. Okay. Is there anyone whose name I haven't called yet? If so, please speak now. Okay, and I, I can see we've got uh, uh, Alderman uh, Mitchell on. Uh, Alderman Mitchell, do you want to speak at the beginning or at the end? I'll, I'll, I'll wait to the end. Okay, all right, thank and you. And by the way, uh, uh, Fourth District Lieutenant Stephen Carroll is on the show as well. Oh, okay, uh, Stephen Carroll, so are, 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 are you here in supporter objection? Sergeant Carroll, 4th District, we're here for objection. Okay. Okay. Um, now that we have everybody promoted, I want to remind everyone that this is not a town hall. This is a hearing, so we as the board are looking for evidence that either supports or does not support the applicant's case. Here is how the hearing is going to proceed. First, the applicant will put on their case and any of their witnesses, if any. Um, if their supporters, will turn to the supporters and ask as to why they're in support. Then we'll turn to the objectors and the objectors can put on their case as well as ask questions of the applicant's witnesses and supporters, if there are supporters, and I think there are here. Um, after that, the applicant can ask questions of the objectors. Then we'll return to the applicant for any rebuttal testimony and closing remarks. Uh, after that, the board will take the matter under advisement. Throughout the hearing, board members will be asking questions of both the applicant and objectors. <laughs> okay, um, Mr. Uh, Mitchell or Merrill, could you uh, state your name and address, please? My name is Derek Morrell. My address is 1332 East 72nd Place, Chicago, Illinois, 60619. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. And I'm going to get your two witnesses sworn in as well. Uh, Brent Baldwin, could you state your name and address, please? That's Brent Baldwin, 55 West West 20th Street, Lombard, Illinois. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. And uh, Janelle Shelton, could you state your name and address, please? Uh, yes, Commissioner. Uh, sorry. Janelle Shelton, uh, address is 3939 South Lake Park Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60653. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Mr. Merrill, uh, what brings you yes. here today? Uh, I'm here because I'm petitioning the board for a special use license to operate um, a barbershop, pedicure, and um, a special uh, masseuse, licensed masseuse at the area. Uh, for the nail tech and the masseuse, I needed a special use license to uh, be in operation. Okay, um, uh, thank you. You know what, before, uh, uh, before we keep going, um, let me uh, have Nancy Radzovich read the um, the Department uh, of Planning's recommendation. Nancy, are you on? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Could you uh, read the recommendations? And this is for 345 and 346? That's correct, yes. Okay. Um, the Department of Planning and for 345, 
22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends denial of the barbershop slash nail salon due to the four cease and desist orders that were issued against the applicant, Pharaoh Gentleman Spa, and because the Department of Planning and Development have not been advised that all open violations have been resolved. 346-22-S, uh, the Department of Planning and Development recommends denial of the massage establishment due to the four cease and desist orders that were issued against the applicant, Ferro General Spa, and because the Department of Planning and Development have not been advised that all open violations have been resolved. Okay, thank you. Um, first, before we, before you continue, if you're not speaking right now, please mute yourself. We are getting some feedback from someone, so please mute if if you're not speaking. Uh, well, what are the four cease and desist orders, and what violations? Because I haven't went through any cease and desist or any violation notices for the property. Um, who can speak to the cease and desist orders? Uh, Commissioner, I, I'll speak to it. Um, I just received a call of uh, Alderman Greg to Seventh Ward. I just oh, uh, before you start, um, uh, Alderman, could you um, did you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Proceed. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just received a call from Business Affairs and Consumer Protection informing me they will not be joining the call. However, they have sent over to the uh, to the board the documentation that supports the cease and desist order. Um, but in but in a nutshell, on uh, on before 8 30, 2022, um, in response, in response to uh, calls uh, from my office um, regarding the uh, proposed business um, and activity at the location, uh, BACP and Department of Buildings responded. They uh, they 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 they, uh, they visited the location and eat and issued a cease and desist order. Uh, for a number of activities, including liquor consumption on premises, tobacco dealing, massage establishment, and public place of amusement, both without licenses. Um, and they, they continue to monitor the location um, from that point. Um, the calls that we got from the community um, included uh, um, uh, activity at the location without permits, like a party. Um, they noted that uh, there was some, some form of strip club activity and members of the community actually said they, they witnessed, I did not witness it. I visit the location several times at night and during the days to check things out. I did not witness that, but my constituents have reported that. Um, in talking with the owner of the property, um, he, he, uh, um, he is not, Based on what the community in my office has reported to him, he, he has taken a um, stance that he is not um, supportive of this anymore. And I think he reached out to uh, Mr. Merrill to discuss that with him. Um, but once again, the, the documentation from um, the cease and disorder, I've been told has been forwarded to you guys. Okay. Mr. Uh, Morell. Uh, you're, you're, I, I, I had to mute you because we were getting feedback from you, but um, so you have to unmute. Okay, I can uh, hear you guys. Well, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Um, I never received a cease and desist order from anyone. The few times that we were in the establishment was to clean up the establishment. I had a few people help me that invested and a few of the workers helped me mop up, straighten up, um, as far as a stripper establishment, I have no recollection or any idea where they got the idea from. It's strictly a barber shop, nail shop, and a massage area. Um, we are there. You know, I just had the windows vandalized from the neighborhood. We are there boarding up. I had to file a police report 
to for a break in. We had to straighten that up. Um, other than that, I have deliveries coming in where we have a worker party unload um, some of the material as far as the barber chairs and everything in case we do get open. And so that's the only time we're there. We play music um, to occupy the time while we're there. We leave out, we lock up, and that's it. We clean up. So as far as me receiving anything in person or anybody visiting, saying stop something that I'm doing, that never happened, that never took place. I had, I just been notified three weeks later because I barely go there to check on the place because I have cameras now that the windows was broken. So I just had to have somebody board up the windows at the location. We haven't been occupying the space for anything. Okay. Um, Ms. Shelton, I, I see you have your hand raised. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Um, so for as far as on the violation part, um, we are working to cure those violations of the list of violations, um, applying for the standard permit permits and plans. Oh, uh, uh, before you uh, before you continue, uh, um, yes. oh no, wait, I did swear yeah, you. Yeah, you swore me I? in. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, continue. I understand. And then outside of any um uh, cease and desist or was never notified. Um, typically. I will get notified or uh, we'll work on that with the business department. Um, no notices has been left on the building. Um, even on the cameras, we have had city inspectors come by and try to uh, gank on the doors on the cameras and everything is locked up and boarded, boarded up unless we're um, he's trying to get his supplies. So not really sure about those cease and desist orders. And if, if there's not any evidence to show it, it shouldn't be brought up in this case. What are the, um, you, you mentioned some violations uh, that you're working to correct. What are those violations? Well, just typically on the building. Um, any violation as far as like with the mason work or uh, the, just the typical uh, rehab and gut that we're going to do anyway to make it up to scale to where we need to be for the build out. Okay. So the uh, architect we're working on, we're, we're getting um, different quotes for the architect, but as you know, as an expediter, we're applying for the violations that will be addressed when we do the standard build out. Okay. Uh, Alderman Mitchell, I can see you You have your ha hand raised. Did you wanna speak now? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, you, the board was forwarded a, a flyer that advertised on June 17, 2022 um, an event that was going on at the at the club. There is no licenses granted to this business. So therefore, advertising this type of activity is 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 in violation of both ordinances at the BACP level, licensing and the building violations. Because this these type of buildings by by virtue of the zoning, which is B1 through 3, are not permitted by right at that building. And then like, once again, as you can see, you were, and I hope you guys have it, you reported the community, the flyer on June 17, 2022, they were advertising the, the, the uh, advertising the event at that location, which would be involved with, they would have had no licenses uh, to, to even, to even uh, conduct this type of activity. That's number one. Number two, for, for, for there to have been issued violations, that means the cease and desist order is part of that. So, and as it's coming up on the screen right now, there's the cease and desist order. The cease and desist order. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking at that right now as you're speaking, Alderman. Um, Mr. Morell, if, if you can look to the screen, uh, it's being shared on the screen right now. It looks like a series of cease and desist orders. Twenty six seventy two East seventy fifth Street is the uh, is the mailing address. Care of Derek Morrell. Yeah, that is the mailing address. Can you hear me? Yes, that is the mailing address for the business. But due to the fact that the business is not open, we haven't been able to put a mailbox at that facility because we're not operational. In regards to what the alderman is speaking upon, 
on the 17th of June, that was a private um, investors gathering that we had at the location, not open to the public. Uh, no money was collected for the uh, for the gathering. It was uh, hosting the employees at the establishment, showing the investors who will be there and what services they provide. At the bottom is the Dread Tech that was um, hired from Houston. The masseuse is right there. The nail tech is right there. There was no payment for any of the uh, any of the services that was uh, presented to the uh, investors. Mr. Morel, I'm 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 looking at the um, at the advertisement that's on the screen right now. It says Pharaoh Gentleman Spa Grand Opening, fifteen dollar entry fee. $10 BYOB fee, $40 hookah per hour, $15 ice bucket with five cups, chaser, no outside cups, ice or chaser, $10 drink cigar tickets, limited to double shot, June 17, 2022, 2673 East 75th Street, spa services, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., stripper show, 8 p.m. until... It doesn't have an end time. Um, is this a uh, ad that that you prepared? That is not by me. Have you seen this ad before this, today? This is, this is my first time having this brought to my attention. Uh, we have not we have not raised a dollar at that establishment since we've been there. Um, starting this whole special use license since March. Did that you has have no money? Did Go you ahead. have an event on June 17, 2022 at the premises? On June 17th, I had an investors meeting at the premises um, showing the uh, the barbers, the nail tech, and the masseuse. And we also had um, my friend who did free of charge, no payment, um, play his saxophone music for the investors while they were there uh, looking at the play. But uh, but you've never seen this ad and you, you don't know where it came from? This ad is new to me. Um, I have promoters that are doing flyers to build up the conversation about the establishment but I have no control over the flyers that they create to introduce the establishment to potential new clients once it does get open. Do you uh, have any, for the Pharaoh <coughs> Gentleman Spa, do you have any um, social media presence? Uh, not at this moment, I'm waiting on, the only thing I do on my page is let people know that I'm working on building a spa and what the spa has to offer as far as the amenities where you get your hair cut, you get your feet done, you get a massage. That's all I have uh, on my page. Do you know if this ad was posted on the Facebook page for Pharaoh Gentleman Spa? I don't even have um, control of Pharaoh's Gentleman Spa Facebook page. That is a promoter that created a page uh, to promote the company for when it opens. What's the name of the promoter? Uh, Dion, Neon Dion. Dion what? Neon Dion, that's his promotion name. His actual name is Dion Harding. Okay, is he, is, is Dion Harding a friend of yours? Yes, I graduated with him. Um, he's been in uh, promotions for about three or four years now. Um, what he do is uh, take his following and introduce them to new businesses and locations as far as uh, food trucks, uh, restaurants, uh, night events, and things of that nature. He uh, has a large following over, over 20,000 people in the uh, Chicago area. And so pretty much his promotions brings a large mass of people when establishments are uh, up and running. 
And uh, you didn't have any conversations with him about this promotion? I'm sorry, uh, we got muted. Uh, my question was, you didn't have any conversations with him about this uh, promotion? I'm sorry, can you repeat your last week? We had, I had a call trying to break in and it muted the phone. Sure. The, qu the question is, you, you didn't have any conversations with your uh, promoter about this uh, ad, this advertisement that we're looking at? Uh, no, I had no I had no conversations with him because I haven't paid him anything to do any promotions because we're not licensed to be open yet. I've been, I've been patiently waiting on my hearing. Um, I was under the understanding that it might've happened in August. August got pushed to September. September got pushed to October. So I haven't hired anybody for anything. I lost most of the workers due to the delay. I have to re, uh, I have to re, uh, find barbers and everything due to the delay. So we haven't done anything. But you, but you did have a conversation with Mr. Harding about having an event at the premises on June 17 of 2022. Is that correct? I had a conversation with Mr. Harding in regards to me having investors uh, coming to the space on June 17th, um, looking to uh, find more equity to build out the place once we get licensed. That's what I had a conversation with him about. And he asked me, did I want him to do anything in regards to it? I said, there's nothing to do because it's a private uh, investors meeting. And there's really, you know, nothing we can do at the place because my expediter has explained and stressed to me that we can't do anything at the location involving business. All we can do is clean up and show the property to future investors and have meetings with the uh, potential employees at the location. I had meetings with security. I have armed security service for the location. Um, I had meetings with my host. I had meetings with my, my nail techs. I had meetings with the barbers and that started back in April. After that, we haven't done anything. No meetings, no, no uh, investors. We haven't had a soul come into that establishment since June. Okay, um, I can see uh, Ms. Shelton has her hand raised. Let's, we're gonna go to Ms. Shelton and then we'll go to uh, Mr. Baldwin and then we're gonna turn to the, to the rest of the objectors. Um, I apologize. That was my hand raised from earlier. Thank oh, you, Doug. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, Mr. Mr. Baldwin. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, you're, you're you're here in in uh, in, in support of of the application, uh, correct? Yes, I, I completed a, a special use analysis um, for the. Um, build out of a barber shop and massage parlor. Right, yeah, right. You're the uh, right. the, you're the appraiser. The appraiser. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. And and, great. and we, we do recognize your expertise. Um, could you tell us um, uh, what you found with regard to this? Um, well, I, yeah, I inspected the property, the surrounding area, um, you know, and, and the building is currently, you know, pretty much empty when I went through it, um, needs work. Uh, but looking at the surrounding area, you know, I felt that there was uh, no adverse effect of having, um, you know, a barbershop um, massage area and that it would promote employment for the area. And it's very walkable because there's a lot, there's a lot, a lot of multi-unit buildings in the area. Uh, when did you uh, visit the property? Uh, June 14th, 2022. Um, when you visited the property, did you see any ads like the one that is currently shown on the screen? No, no, I, there, there was nothing that I, I believe the windows might've even been, um, uh, you know, blacked out. So I, I think it was, no, I didn't see anything at that time. 
prior to today, have you ever seen this this advertisement? No, I have not. Okay. okay. I mean, the, the report I completed was the last time I, you know, really had anything to do with the property. Any questions from the board of the applicants or the witnesses before we move to the objectors? May, may I make my statement uh, per request at the start of this? Sure. Yeah. All right. So I just would like to introduce myself and give um, a history of, of myself and my business. And so I will start by um, letting the board and objectors and the witnesses know how I expect to impact the community. Uh, my location will bring in jobs, which employs 15, uh, looking to employ 15 people as of today. Uh, I have back to school drives for uh, people that's not fortunate, which I already participate in outside of the general spot, but I'm looking for, I'm looking for, I'm looking for putting it into the community where the spa is located. Winter coat drives also, free back to school supplies and haircuts. Um, just fixing up a closed down building brings property value up. Uh, for people that can't afford to travel up north to receive a, a massage, like I do myself when I go on vacation, you can now get it in your own neighborhood where you reside at. Um, for the safety part, I have armed security that increases safety in a neighborhood. Um, I have appointment only where there is no walk-ins where someone feels fear for their life while getting a haircut. Um, I have tenant windows where you can't see in. And the most main thing I have is cameras um, where it can help law enforcement uh, help on cases. We recently, about a month and a half ago, had a male lady get robbed at gunpoint. The FBI couldn't obtain too much footage because it's nothing but closed down and uh, boarded up storefronts down 75th. So with my cameras, it will help the law enforcement figure out what crimes are being committed and what vehicles are being driven up in the, uh, uh, do these crimes. Uh, who I am as a person, as Derek Morrell, I am a father, a football coach for the youth. I am a business person. I am a mentor for young and first uh, black individuals. I am a helper of the community. As I stated before, I do back to school drive. I also feed the homeless around Christmas with my kids. We don't even celebrate Christmas. Our Christmas is spending going out to uh, Tent City, feeding and giving warm clothing to the uh, homeless people. Um, what do my business stand for? Helping people like myself grow into business owners like myself, showing others that if you invest in your community and not destroy it, you can build yourself up. And that is my statement that I would like to read to the objectives and the board. Okay, I, and I believe um, these uh, cease and desist orders have now um, been sent to your email. So you should have okay. that now. Um, okay, uh, before we move to the objectors, uh, does the board have any uh, questions of the applicant right now? Okay, hearing none, we are gonna uh, move with to the objectors. Um, and I can see that uh, Janice has her hand raised. Oh wait, actually, do we have some supporters first? We do have some supporters. Yes, we do. I'm I'm so glad you said that because that that's really kind of disrespectful. I am a supporter. I'm yeah, I want to get to the supporters first. I apologize for that. Okay, um, but I, I just wanted to know, uh, as a panelist, do we get to ask questions of each of the people that are reporting? At what point does that happen? Um, you'll be able to. Uh, you are you a supporter or, or objector? I am an objector. You'll be able to ask questions of the applicant once we get to you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But let's uh, let's go to the supporters. Um, uh, I think it was uh, Shanna was speaking. 
Yes, this is Shauna. Um, hello, my name is Shauna. I am a resident of the seventh ward. Could you could you state your, your full name and address, please? Yeah, Shauna Landhart. My address is 7756 South Essex South Essex. Apartment one, Chicago six four nine. Um, I apologize. Oh. I'm so sorry. This is the court reporter. There's some background. If other people that aren't speaking can mute, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before you uh, start speaking, uh, could do you swear or if, oh, could you, you know what, state your name and address again? You, you were breaking up. Yes. Shauna Landhart. My address is 7756 South Essex. E-S-S-E-X Avenue, Apartment 1, Chicago, Illinois, 60649. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Uh, okay, go ahead and uh, please express your support. Um, I am in full support. I am a millennial, I'm 25 years old, and I actually live really right around the corner from the proposed uh, establishment. And I think the owner said it earlier, I do not know this guy or anything like that, but um, I'm not going up north anymore. I should not have to go downtown or up north just to get simple services like a massage, my nails done, my hair done. Me, my homegirls, my homeboys, we should not have to travel outside of our neighborhood. As I stated before, this is essentially right around the corner from me. And just like the man said, and a few other people over here said, there's literally nothing on 75th. So if somebody is coming in trying to propose a successful business that will help the community, give jobs, give some type of getaway for people over here to get away from already the drama and chaos that's over here, why would anybody object? I am in full support once again. And I feel as if somebody like myself, young college student, if I want to open up a business in my neighborhood as a Black woman, I'm going to be persecuted just like as this man was on this line. And honestly, I don't want to do that. So somebody like myself might go back to my home state, Houston, Texas, or to Indiana to open up a business if this is the hurdles you have to jump through in Chicago to open up a business as a Black person. So I hope the board, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals, I hope you guys approve this. For people like myself, the majority of the neighborhood who look like me are of my age and come from where I've come from, who are in support of this establishment. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Are there any other supporters? I can, hold on, we've got somebody raising their hand. Um, I'm gonna promote to a panelist. All right, we, we just promoted uh, Natalie Perkins. Um, are you here in objection or support? I'm in objection. Okay, okay, great. We'll, 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 we, we will get uh, to all the objectors. Um, last last call for, uh, for supporters. Um, if there is any other supporters, please uh, raise your hand and, and uh, we'll, we'll swear you in so you can express your support. Okay, hearing none, um, we've got a lot of objectors here. Uh, let's see here. Can I state for the record, I didn't know about bringing supporters. I have a lot of supporters and I don't mind petitioning the, the neighborhood to be in support of the spa. So I just wanted to state that for the record. Had I known, I would have had a, a lot of supporters on the line today. Okay, um, so any anyone who wants to express, who wants to go first here, uh, I'll just I'll just call a name out, uh, Janice. Okay, so I'd like to start by uh, first. At first, uh, please um, state your name and address, please, so I can swear okay. you in. My name is Janice Jones. And I live about a block, a uh, block, maybe a block and a half away from this um, property. Sure. Well, what's what's your address? Well, I'd like to use my P.O. Box 490-149, Chicago, Illinois, 60649, which is also right around the corner from this facility. And, 
And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Okay, so I wanted to ask questions because I hear, um, uh, I wanted to start with the owner and I wanted to be clear who the owner is of this property. So can, um, is it Derek Morrell? Are you the owner of this property? Yes, ma'am. I'm the owner of the business and I'm the owner, I'm the purchaser of the building itself. Okay. And so I heard you say, I heard you say that you were having all of these meetings with your workers. And so I was wondering if you had like a board or a management uh, type of meetings or whatever, because when I hear your, when I'm listening to what you're reporting, when it comes to your promoter, you're unaware of anything that's going on. You're unaware of the fly, uh, flyers that's going on. That's what I heard you say. Um, you also reported that when it came to, um, you know, you don't know anything about the uh, notices of uh, the cease and desist notice, right? So I want to know, like, how does it work? Are you meeting with your people to ensure that you're knowledgeable of these things as a business owner to know what's going on with your business? How does that work? Hold on, I, let me address it, her questions real quick for one second, Janelle. Uh, here's my answer to your question. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Here's my answers to your questions that you yes, had. To your concern. Um, as for me being forward with the business itself, everything is on hold because of the hearing that we're in today. I applied for the license in March and I didn't get the scheduled hearing until currently now in October, which made me stop the meetings and stop moving forward with anything. As far as the letters of cease and desist, I haven't put a mailbox out there because we aren't allowed to operate. So I need to cut in a mailbox into the brick wall so the mail can be placed into our establishment. I can't do any of that until I'm approved to operate and then approved to do remodeling. So as for me having a board, that is not established yet because we don't have the authority to move forward as of yet. Okay, so I, okay, that's fine. I was thinking of maybe like a planning board, like people that you come together and decide how you guys are gonna move forward, like some kind of business plan, like how you guys are gonna proceed with these sorts of things. The second question I wanna ask you is, uh, I, you made the comment that you had boarded this place up and that you have security cameras out there. Can I ask you, when did the board up? When did you do the board up? Uh, the board up is happening actually this weekend. I just discovered that the windows was vandalized on, on I was at a wedding, so it was about a week and a half ago. Okay. I had to make sure that we won't be in violations for boarding up the windows looking as if we're working on the place. Once I got told that it's, it's a good to go, it won't be in violation, somebody broke your window, I authorized because I'm not, I'm a business owner. So I do snow removal, landscaping and construction. So I authorized my, my, one of my workers to go there and board up the window, which is he, which he's doing tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. And then you also mentioned about the security camera. When did that go up? Uh, the security camera went up the very next day after the place was broken into. Um, it's one in the front, one in the back, and one in the inside. The front can see the entire alley um, behind the building into the street. And uh, the one in the front can see directly across the street, all the way to the corner, and partially past that daycare that's in front of me. And recently, somebody's car about two months ago was broken into. But by me having my advertisement banner up, she wasn't able to see who actually broke into her car. She seen the timestamp of the car being there. And then I let her know the timestamp of the, the car leaving. So that shows that I'm willing to work with the community when something happens to them. And I'm also willing to work with the police when something happens in our neighborhood, just like it happened with that postal worker that was robbed. And I offered the FBI my footage. They told me that it was not necessary because it wasn't in the direction of my camera. Okay.
All right, uh, Janice, did you have any other uh, questions? Actually, uh, I have uh, two more. I wanted to know, have he considered having um, uh, a business like this in his neighborhood, like near his house where he lives? Have you considered I, I live in your like neighborhood. I live down the street. I live literally by the Save-A-Lot on Stony Island. Um, that, on is, that is not down the street. That's oh, about a mile away. That's a mile away. Minutes. It takes me five minutes to get there. And yes, I consider opening it there, but I was fortunate enough to purchase that building at that location at a reasonable price. When I invest, I invest where I can not rent, but, but buy. So what, what I want you guys to understand is I'm here for the long haul. Whether I allow, whether I'm allowed to open a barbershop, I can put my landscaping there, but my landscaping doesn't help your area of property taxes. It doesn't give jobs to the community. It doesn't provide a service for the initial community right there in that area because we're branched out. And I even do the snow removal for the Alderman's location over there on 95th. That whole strip, I remove the snow. I have 50 underprivileged, diverse Black individuals working for me that I mentor and pay a high rate, $25 an hour, to remove snow. I am a very structured and helpful business person for the community. I'm not looking to hurt you guys. I'm looking I to help. But so I'm just looking at your efforts so far, and it causes me, uh, it, I'm concerned about the management of how this is working, or how this is unfolding. So uh, the last thing I wanted to ask is, um, you stated that it was, when you look at that place over there that you just bought, when you look at the block, you're directly across the street from a daycare and a senior living facility and down the street from a school. Can you, can you tell me how you feel that it is appropriate to entertain at that place, a, a large mass of people. How do you feel? I don't understand how that property can, number one, um, uh, handle a large mass of people. How do you think oh. it does fit with the area? How um, does it fit with the area? I'm, I think we're mistaken on what the property is for. The property is appointment only, and it's not for a large mass. But I'm you mistaken. Stated we only have seven. We only have seven barbers, one dread tech, a nail technician, and a masseuse, which only allows us 12 visitors per time. But so in, in your statement earlier, you referred to a large mass of people. So I'm just no, saying. In my, my statement earlier was about promoters following. Which brings a lot of we can't hear you right now, Mr. Morrell. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now Mr. Morrell, when you are moving around, you yeah, you, you might want to stop moving area. around because you're you're coming in and out. My 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 talk about the large mass of people was in regards to the promoter and the group of people that he brings to a new business. It was not as if I'm gonna I can't hope I can't service no more than fifteen people at a time. So it won't be a large group. It's an appointment only. You can't get in. It's no walk-ins. You can't get in without an appointment. Okay, this is the last question, I promise. Um, why you didn't consult with the community? Why didn't you consult with us? I'm literally block away. Why didn't you consult with us to ask us what kind of business we want in this community? Your business basically does not lie. It's not a good fit with the goal that we have for South Shore. It's just a good fit. Well, for we, your goal, for that, your goal of South Shore, because my goal is different from your well, the goal. the residents that live here in- I live in South Shore. We're from a different age. Well, hold on. Hold, hold, everybody stop. Everybody well, stop. Everybody stop okay. right now. I'm talking everybody, to the owner. Everybody stop right now, okay? When the objector is asking questions of the applicant, we're going to let those two talk. Nobody else is going to jump in. Okay, we're gonna let everybody talk and finish before somebody else speaks. I'm not gonna allow this to, you know, this is not gonna be chaos. So Janice, Janice was speaking. 
uh, you can continue. Yeah, basically, I'm just asking, you know, to consider another place. Uh, when I was speaking on Stone Shore, I, you guys say you live in the area, but you're on Stony Island, which is a long way. And uh, Essex is, you know, not, it's about what, maybe five blocks away. So all I'm saying is, is that we weren't consulted. We're business, we're homeowners. We're business owners too. And we were never consulted about what you wanted to bring to our community. You never got our input. And your business, sir, I'm not trying to be, your business is not, does not fit with that corner. It does not fit in that location. That, I'll, I'll finish with that. Please reconsider somewhere else. It's not okay. even wanted. It's not can even I, here. Please can consider. I address your last question? Can I address your last statement? Yes, sir. As, as for me consulting with the community, I spoke to everyone that stood outside. I walked through that neighborhood. Everyone asked me, what is your intentions on building? I told them. They said, we love it. We're looking forward to having you there. We can't wait till you open. As for me understanding that everybody in the neighborhood won't be in agreement, but here's my thing. You have three other barbershops six blocks down in the same community. And you have nail techs right there on, on um, which is your ward, right there on uh, 95th and Jeffrey in your community, in your ward, and they're welcome. So you saying that I'm not welcome when I asked the community and I wanted to go door to door to every resident. But when I was instructed, when I was instructed by the board that it had to go, the letters had to go out to the owners of the property, which was not the people at the location. You can't give the letters because my intentions was to hand deliver each letter to each resident and knock on the door to speak to them to let them know what my intentions was in the community. But they said, that is not the way you deliver the letters. So the letters go to the property owners and most of your property owners in that community don't live in that community. Well, sir, I live in the community. I am a property owner in the community and I live right down the street and I never got anything from you or your establishment. And with that being said, I'm, um, I'm just gonna, um, oh, I wanted to ask, you said to go up and you guys are bringing in services that we wouldn't nor normally get on this side of town or whatever, but you've already mentioned the nail techs and the barbershops and we have plenty of those. I was in, in reference to the masseuse up north. I understand. Well, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, ask you about your masseuse. Is this like therapeutic massage or something? To what capacity are they licensed as a masseuse, right? Because if we're gonna talk about- Yes, we can, okay. we can talk about the masseuse. The masseuse is specialized in um, lava stone, for um, rehab, rehabilitation. She has sport athletes as some clients. Um, she's also specialized in deep tissue massages. There is no underplay involved. It is appointment only. You only have a set time. Um, and it is a legit massage, masseuse, as you would have up north when you go in the loop area. Um, like the, the alderman spoke upon, we spent, he spoke upon years ago about all the money that's spent in the loop area and all the rehab and all the buildups and the big time investors. Well, us small time investors want to bring back our community and we're not waiting on the big time investors to work on the U.S. steel location from overseas that doesn't, he, 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 he has plans for U.S. steel that's up the street that used to be operational, that's closed down, for a foreigner to come in from overseas to revamp that and turn that whole place into a lakefront commodity. Our people won't be able to afford that. But is that the only business that our people can bring to the community? Is that all that we have that's, to offer? Is, and, uh, and, and to let you know, is that all we have to offer? It's, have it's, not, a, it's not a gentleman. Sir, it's we not have a gentleman. kids. We have impressionable youth. We're trying to build families. You talk about your family, but you're keeping it away from your kids. Don't bring it in Actually, our my community. My kids work there. 
please. My my kids work right. here, but to answer your statement, that is not the only piece of property I plan on buying on 75th. I have multiple businesses. Okay, all right, all right. but I, I want to stay focused on this property. Yes. Uh, you know, we're 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 kind of going we're 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 going in circles here a little bit. I, I've I've heard the objection, um, and I uh, you've you've responded, uh, Mr. Yes. Mr. Merrill. I um, I'd I'd like to move to uh, another um, ob objector if we can. Okay, uh, so I was merely asking a question, but I did not. I had a statement as well. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, I just wanted to say that. I am a resident of South Shore, of the South Shore community and business owner. My whole family has been a resident and have operated businesses in South Shore for over 50 years. And we've seen the changes. We've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. We have worked diligently to bring peace to that corner and have endured many struggles. While we have made strides, we remain vigilant to keep our community and its people safe. Our goal has always been to create a South Shore that's vibrant, self-sustaining, family-oriented, a community where all of its residents feel safe. We strongly object to the rezoning of this property. Um, and here's, here's our reasoning. Um, community perception of a community's perception affects our quality of life. Where fear of crime exists, the quality of life drops. Residents tend to stay isolated in their homes. This is a major hindrance to the efforts that we have made to reduce crime. We want our neighbors to feel safe, children to play outside, residents to walk to the store, work or jog in the park. We want our families to stay in the community. We want new families to come move into the community. And we want those that have left to not be afraid to come back. The, impl the implementations of this type of business moving into a community ignites fear. We've already, we're already starting to see what is happening up there. The gunshots, you coming in with armed security because you anticipate that there's going to be trouble. The type of this type of business does not align with our goal, as I stated before. The community has was never consulted whether or not this business is a good fit. It doesn't have the characteristics um, of our community. It does not fit with that. No, say we are not in the same community. Hold up! Hold, hold up! Hold up! Oh, hold up! This is not your that. turn to speak. I this just want to let. This is not your turn to speak. I just want to let you know that. This type of behavior, that this is an example of what we are to expect his workers and his affiliates or whatever, we definitely don't need it. So this location is known with the city of Chicago. It's known hotspot. It's filled with crime and violence. Community strategically working with the police at this location to crimes. Things have simmered down, but it remains a work in progress. This location is one block from down the street from the school, across the street from a daycare and a senior living facility. It is with great prayer supplication that the board of appeals will not be here to request. I apologize. I'm so sorry. This is, this is the court reporter. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is she just breaking up for me or is it everybody? No, she's breaking up everybody. for everybody. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, well, I'll just I'll just say this. It is with great prayer and supplication that the Zoning Board of Appeals will not only hear this request, but will deny the rezoning of this property for the use of a gentleman's club or any other business that does, that does not bring value to our community. This is not the type of business that fits well with what we're trying to do over here. I can't speak for Essence or Stony Island, but I can't speak for South, this South Shore area here this part of where I live. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Um, we are going to move to the thank next you. objector. Com Commissioner. Get, Com no, oh, everybody stop. We're gonna move to the next objector. And when uh, we get through the objectors, we will go back to the applicant and his supporters, okay? But we're gonna get through the objection objections first. Otherwise, okay. too much back and forth. Uh, but I do see that Alderman uh, Mitchell wants to speak. So please uh, proceed, Alderman Mitchell. Commissioner, if you don't mind, we have both the captain of the fourth district and the commander of the third online to get them back into the, to the street. Can we have them go next? Yes. 
Are they are they uh, are they panelists right now, or do we need to promote them? Yes, Steve Carroll is a panelist, and I saw that uh, uh, Commander Watson was as well. Okay, great. Um, let's let's go with uh, with Mr. Carroll next. Uh, and what I want to say too is um, we've, we've heard a, a lot um, from our first objector, and uh, it's really about quality and quantity. If you agree with the prior objector, then you can just say that you agree with the prior objector. I, I don't need a duplicate of what we just heard, okay? If you, if you agree with the objections that have already happened that come before you, then you can say that. And if you have something new to add, then add that. But I don't need a repeat of an objection. And with that, uh, please, everybody, please mute yourself. Uh, let's go to Mr. Carroll next. You know, I respectfully defer to uh, the commander of the third district. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the commander. Hello. Okay, I'm I'm sorry, guys. I'm in and out of meetings right now. So what I'm what I'm going to actually do, I'm 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 going to actually have my officers, my business officers, Officer Revere and Officer Jackson, to discuss some of reason why we are objecting and the problems we're having with this location. Officer Hello. Jackson, you on? I am. I am, Commander. Thank you. Okay, Officer Jackson, could you state your name and role, please? Uh, my name is Officer Jackson. I'm located at 7040 South um, Cottage Grove, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Um, do you, do you we, swear or affirm to tell the truth in these proceedings? I do. Thank you. Please proceed. Um, I agree with everything that the alderman said previously and the last caller. Um, but some of our concerns is that um, if he, um, if Mr. Morell is not aware of what's happening in the evening, like uh, with the strip parties that we were brought uh to our attention moving forward how will we know that he's not aware of other parties that's happening later that was a question directed to me correct uh officer yeah okay to answer your question the reason why i'm not aware of the plugger as i stated before is that i don't have paid promotion going on right now if somebody decides to promote my business, I can't stop that. If somebody that I know, know I'm opening a business and decides to advertise it on, on my business behalf. My question to you is, do you have actual reports recorded for my establishment or are you talking in reference to what potentially might happen? No, we, we were bought, uh, this was brought to our attention from, through the community. And that you guys had us for the party that. So you actually had reports on actual days that it was a disturbance, a unrest, uh, or any notion that was going on at my establishment that I can come obtain and, and I, see for myself. I do not right now. So right now you just have reports of concerned citizens in a neighborhood that is against my establishment opening. Yeah, stating that you had a stripper party there um, that night. From a flyer that they seen online, that, did anybody say they witnessed or entered his number? my establishment with strippers? Another. Hello? Okay. All right. I'm sorry, who's, who's speaking right now? Uh, this is Captain. Do, do we have a log for the cause of service there? Give me a second, Captain. Because you have the report of that I made for the inspector, and you have the break-in report. Other than that, there was never an officer called out to my establishment. Somebody broke in when I first came in there, putting equi uh, barber equipment in, and somebody, um, the inspector came out, which I didn't know he was a city inspector and yanked on the door and set off the alarm, which I dialed 911 and have a report for that. Outside of that, I would love to know any other reports for my establishment. Um, also, I just want to add, I'm sorry, um, with the service. Who's, who's speaking? 
I do apologize. Okay, this is not, uh, look, this is not your time to speak and I'm gonna get to you, I promise you. I will get to you, I will get to everybody. Everybody's gonna get their turn, I promise. Okay. But this is not your turn to, to jump in. Um, we're, we're, we're gonna do this in an orderly fashion. Otherwise, we're gonna be here on this one case all day. Chairman of the board, I would like to state in fact that if they were prepared to bring allegations on my establishment, they would have had the reports and, and, and the things ready that they needed on hand. This is all hearsay from people that don't want it. And as I'm, I want to petition the board to allow me time to go in the community and get them to sign a petition saying whether they're for it or against it. And I'm willing to respect what the community feels. If the community is against, if majority of the community is against my establishment, open it in their community, I'm willing to turn my establishment into an office for my landscape. So right now we're, we're dealing with, I know it doesn't seem like it's a few because you have 20 or 30 people objecting, but 20 or 30 people doesn't represent the seventh ward district. And so if I'm willing to go door to door to every door in that community, and get a petition signed and, and enter in a record saying that whether they're for or against and majority is against, then I give this board in the objectors my word, I will turn that building into something else. Hello? Because right now we just have supporters of the alderman, which if he only brought 30 to a meeting, that's, that's not a good, support base but if we only have the alderman supporter to object then i should be allowed to get the people that's for mr morell yes hey this is officer jackson again um, as of march um you've had 20 calls for service in that area and i can pick those calls up This is um yeah the, the twenty calls are some different things. Um, uh, officer, this is tech support. I think you're in close proximity of another uh, person who's in the meeting. So we're yeah, getting we're feedback. feedback when you when you talk. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I moved to another room. Yeah, we, I've just um. Uh, we stated that he had 20 calls for service um, for different um, reasons over the last few months. And may I come pick those records up? Yes. Okay. And my last question for the officer, because I believe he was done with his statement. He said he agreed with the alderman and the first objector. What? Officer, were you were, were, were you were you finished with with your objection? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. You you can you can ask your question, Mr. Morell. This is my final uh, question for you, officer. Uh, would a running establishment with security cameras help prevent crime, or do close establishment that can't see crimes happening give blind spots to the criminals help increase crime? I, th I think that uh, the cooperation of the business owner will help prevent crime, of course. So you have more closed down locations on 75th in, in that area than you have active. My location will actually help prevent crime. And as they stated earlier, yes, I have armed security because if you live and be in that community, you have individuals hanging on the corner nonstop 24 seven at that area, which I'm trying to protect the people that patronize my area, not in fear of the people inside being serviced, but the people outside that does harm. Directly down is a restaurant that three individuals were shot and one was killed for retaliation. I have to protect 
to people that patronize me at my area. I'm not looking to harm this community. Okay, uh, let's go to the next um, objector. Was as, as far as the the police department is, has everybody spoken that wanted to speak? This is Sergeant the, Carroll from the fourth district. Sergeant Carroll, did did you want to? Did you have anything to add to what's already been said? Yeah, I just have a few things that I'll go over with you guys. Okay. Oh, uh, could, could you state your name and role, please? Sergeant Carroll, 4th District, Sergeant of DCO team, District Coordinating Officers. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. <clears throat> Proceed. Uh, one of the things that I would just like to bring up uh, is that basically all we can go off of, because this is a business is officially is not open, all we can go off of is the uh, citations that were issued, as well as the cease and desist orders, um, both of which show that the um, the owner was operating outside the scope of his license. Um, the cease and desist orders suggest drinking, strippers, as well as um, um, public place of amusement violations, all of which are a very big deal to the third and the fourth district. Uh, I'd like to let you guys know essentially what happens with these places in our experience when they when they do violate these type of these type of uh, licenses is they turn into a, a a social club or a party location or a venue location uh, at this time it's one of the one of the one of our main concerns in the city of Chicago are these party locations due to the uptick in violence that comes along with them uh, the things that it brings to the neighborhood are are um, uh, increased drinking, increased violence, um, all the things that we're looking to avoid. So I, I appreciate everything that the owner said. Uh, however, all we can go off of is the facts and the facts are that there are cease and desist, there are violations issued. Um, the other thing that I would talk to him about is, is with his, he brings up all of his um, video cameras and all that stuff. Two things I would like to know from him directly is are those video cameras tied into OEMC? Was he ever, did he ever approach the third district about getting uh, those cameras tied in so that, so that uh, it shows a working relationship with the Chicago Police Department? I'd also like to know if he uh, is open to a plan of operations, if this does move forward, um, if we can discuss those types of things with him or sit down with CPD, the third and the fourth district if he would sit down and discuss those issues with us in person. But we also have other teams that are working at Chatham and what's the other one? Chatham and Auburn Gretchen. Mr. Merrill, so can we you, have can other teams? So Mr. Merrill, can you? Anybody? Yes, I'm here. I'm just waiting on the uh, the background. To stop. Yeah, let me, let me, again, if, if it's not your turn to speak, please, please stay muted. Mr. Merrill, uh, uh, please respond. Um, first, I want to open up with the statement that he said he, we can only work off the facts. Those are not facts. Those are statements from the community. And as far as the cease and desist, if you get a call from anybody, but nobody came out to actually say yes, when I got a call this day and came out, this individual was operating and doing this at this location. Everything right now is he say from a plugger. Um, as far as my cameras being um, tapped into the Chicago Police Department, once I'm operational, I will forever be a supporter because I have nothing but friends and family and I will tap my cameras into the Chicago Police Department. Um, the person that's responsible for my um, entertainment works for your district. Uh, I have family members in your district. Uh, I will not name them for I don't want anything to happen in regards to them being in support of me, but I am very supported through your police district. As for my order, as for my operation time, my operation time is um, Sunday through Monday, 11 to 6, and um, Tuesday through Saturday, um, 10 to uh, 7. I have no late hours. So there won't be any ruckus or anything else of that nature. I don't have an alcohol license. I don't serve or pertain in alcohol being um, 
at my establishment whatsoever. So whatever is already existing as far as crime and the atmosphere in the neighborhood, my intentions is to make it better. I don't, my business don't increase crime. It is not set up to increase crime. Getting a haircut doesn't welcome criminal activities. It actually prevents criminal activities from them having to travel outside of their neighborhood, which they might be into it with somebody in another neighborhood trying to go that far to get a haircut. It's not a barbershop in that area for a six to seven block radius. And that's going down 75th. As far as going as far to 95th, you don't see a barbershop in that area from straight down to 95th at all. You don't see one going straight down to 71st until you get to Jeffrey at all. So me bringing a barbershop where they can actually get their haircut and not go into rival communities helps the crime. So I'm not looking to hurt. And yes, I will build a public relationship as I already have with officers. Okay, so the only thing I'm gonna add is that number one, um, I believe he, the cease and desist order was affixed to the building. I believe you guys even have a photograph of that. Um, if you can, if you can show him that it was affixed to the building of his, of, of his property. Um, the other thing would be, uh, again, all I can go off of is what I see and what I and what is written. So the the evidence showed that he was holding illegal parties. He was he was issued violations for that. He was issued cease and desist orders for that. Um, in that no thing, all I cease and desist orders on my property. That that is I, a uh, that is a notarized placard given to me by the board to put in a window to let the community know my intentions on what I'm bringing to the property. that I was told to put into the window so public access can see as part of me in the hearing today. That's what I had to do. Yeah, for the, for the okay, record, well, I, I don't believe we have a photo of a cease and desist order on the, uh, on the building. If I'm wrong, okay. that, somebody will, 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 will let me know, but I, I don't believe we have that. Okay, well, either way, the, the cease and desist orders have now, he's now gotten the cease and desist orders via email uh, from this place. So he understands the, he understands the uh, allegations that were issued against him. All I can say is that I can go off of the cease and desist. I've not seen a bit, I've not seen a barbershop operate out of there. All I can see is what's on this flyer. And what's on this flyer is that they're hosting strippers. They're, they're charging to get in. They're violating the PPA license. They are operating tobacco. Uh, for hookah, uh, all of these things, which he says he's not aware of. However, there's there's the there's the advertisement for it. So based off of that, the fourth district does not want to support, and we would like to object to this man receiving any type of license for this activity. Thank you, Sergeant Carroll. Um, one one question uh, that I have for you is: this address in the third district or the fourth district? This is a border. This is a border district. So, uh, 75th Street, uh, the north side of the street is the third district. The south is side of the street is the fourth district, which is why both of us are here because the uh, actual place affects affects the actual 75th Street affects both of us. I, I see. I, I I appreciate that. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. And, and, uh, I, and I would like to close with the officer. I don't have. A, I just have a statement, not a question. Um, he well, here you let's, uh, Mr. Morell, let's 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 leave your statement until we get to the end because yes, you're gonna, you're going to get the last word. Yes, uh, so so let's let's just keep let's keep this moving. Um, okay, now as far as uh, the, the 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 police department, have we gone through uh, everyone who had an objection from the police department? Okay. Hearing nothing more, I'm going to go to the next objector uh, that I see, which I believe is Veronica Kyle. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Veronica Kyle. Could you state live, your, your name and address, please? Yes, I'm Veronica Kyle. I live in the 2600 block of East 74th Place. I live exactly um, less than 200 steps. Um, away from the establishment, maybe 250. Okay. Do, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Absolutely. Yes, I do. 
Okay, please proceed. And I'm sure you've heard me say it already, but we've heard a lot of objections already. If you agree with the prior objectors, you can say that. If you have something yes. additional to add, then add it. But I don't need repetitive objections. It's really yes. not helpful. Um, let me say, yes, I agree with the prior objectives. And I also want to say, uh, all due respect to Alderman Mitchell, I'm not here um, from his request. I actually received a postcard from your hearing board that showed up in my mail. And it, it told us that we could come on the hearing. And many of us I know on the call received that same card. So I just want to put that out there to the, um, the applicant. Um, I also want to say um, my history with that corner um, runs deep. I moved in this uh, area in 2007 in this ward. Um, and many of us on this call, those two vacant lots, Mr. Merle, we turned them into what we thought would be peace gardens. 20 foot tables, potlucks, pumpkin carving, back to school giveaways, many of the things that you named. Within the course of two years, they became the drug haven hangout. We have had seven major shootings. Five of them um, became homicides. We have watched our children and grandchildren have to be snatched up and run as bullets flew on that corner. And I wanna say to the young lady who I felt her passion of not wanting to have to travel so far to enjoy and have a good time. The problem with, with what has happened on that corner, police constantly being called. That's literally the alderman on this call. He knows we bought heads. He literally shut down the gardens, had the trees mowed down, and moved a fire hydrant because the patrons, the people who live, homeowners, really started to feel so scared and so afraid from all of the negative activity that was happening um, to our peace gardens. And, and thousands of dollars were invested by businesses as well as individuals to make those that corner very nice and it didn't happen. And so what you are what you are hearing and what you are feeling is historical fear of the past. And also to this point, we want to see something that is lifting up our community, our children deserve it. We as seniors deserve it, but those of us who have been traumatized by the violence of the corner of 75th and Coles, we also deserve it. And every commander in the Ottoman on this, on this call, the history that we have experienced, you have not. Neither have your business supporters and your attorneys. And in terms of getting the community's um, input, please reach out to the Chamber of Commerce, the quarry and other places, and let's have that conversation. Why don't you have that town hall with us? And I will assure you, I am 100% um, positive that people will say, this is not what we need on a corner, one block from Powell School, right across from a daycare, a senior home, but for us um, property owners as well. All due respect to you as a business owner, I wish you could sit down with the community and we could talk about something really positive happening. And finally, what I wanna say, if you have promoters working with you that are so disrespectful that they would write these kind of things, activities on your grand opening, that makes me even more extremely concerned that anybody would be able to advertise for my business, promote that on social media, a flyer, and I don't know anything about it and none of these activities are gonna take place. So I want to say, I am passionately objecting to this type of business. I did not say you're not bring a business, but this one right here, the last thing I think black people have any problem finding is a place to get a haircut and get their nails done. And with that, I just wanna uh, file my public objection. Okay, thank you, Ms. Kyle. Um, okay. We're going to go to the next objector. So uh, no longer address the objectors. Oh, uh, well, do you, it, if you have a question for her, then you can then you can ask a question. If you have a statement, let's save it until the end. Yeah, I have a question. Okay, um, okay, go ahead. I would like to know the first question. I would like to know when is the town hall meeting? um 
next meeting so I can attend. Um, the next question I have is, um, would they object to me revisiting and planting the garden free of charge for the community? And the last question is, what is it about my barbershop, nail shop, massage, you feel drives down or bring criminal activity into your community? Let me just say this, in terms of having a meeting, I, I suggested that you reach out to the chamber, that those are, that's the office that handles the businesses and ask for a meeting, they will advertise and we will show up or reach out to the Ottoman's office, ask for a meeting, they will advertise and we will show up, whether it's at Powell School or the chamber office, that's one thing. Secondly, um, this isn't about you putting in a garden. We could go back and plant those flowers right now. And quite frankly, that happened over and over again. It's about the activity that happens on that corner. That is the bang, bang, shoot them up corner right now. One of them in South Shore, period. Um, like you said, you need armed guards. It's not even safe to go there. If that young lady, Shauna, or somebody got hurt there, I would feel devastated because that is what happens on that corner. Does that break my heart? Absolutely. I live walking distance from it. And the last thing I wanna to say to you is, this really isn't about what positive things you can invest in a community because we know good money and bad money can do good things to a community. We don't need another school uh, back giveaway, any of those things, they're all sound wonderful. At the same time, come and talk to the community if you just spent any time in that community, you have talked too much on here about what you didn't know when you did not come, you didn't know this was going on, you hardly ever go there. All of those things make me personally as a resident and you as a business owner very concerned about your ability to be attentive and on point about making sure that what you say you're doing, even though this flyer, and just for the record, I didn't go in your establishment. I haven't been, but I drive past it. The sign is hanging down. I saw the, the broken windows or whether they were bullet holes or rocks. It in itself just made me sick to the stomach and it, it brought back trauma. I'm just trying to get you to understand trauma. We are traumatized by that corner and I'm owning that. Um, and I'm speaking to say that if you're not bringing anything soothing and, 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 and talking to the community about what they think they need, like I said, I object. I don't want to debate it. I'm just stating as a citizen and as a resident long time that there's a lot of ill thoughts and memories um, about that corner. And um, just talking about it, just uh, I visualize, you know, seeing young men gunned down like animals over and over again on that corner, it uh, is, is sickening. Okay, thank you. Um, let's let's go to the next objector, uh, which I believe is Sharon Lewis. Sharon Lewis, you're muted right now. Thank you. Uh, I, yes, I my Lewis. name is. Can you hear me? Yes, could you state your name and address, please? Yes, my name is Sharon Lewis, and I live on seven, in the 7300 block of South Shore Drive. And do, you, um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do, sir. Thank you, Ms. Lewis, and I, I know you've heard me say it, but please, uh, if you agree with the prior objectors, you can say that if you have something new to add, then you can add it, but I really don't need repetitive objections. Uh, certainly, certainly. I do agree with the prior objectors, uh, but what I'd like to bring to the table, which is new, is the fact of the primary school, which is within close proximity no. of that location. And the fact that children have to move back and forth in front of not only that location, but also 75th and uh, between exchange um, and the school, I'm sorry, exchange, uh, Coles and the school, there are, there's extreme loitering. 
I was also a member of the gardens that used to be at that location uh, and was witness to the shootings, et cetera. So I think it's extremely important to take into consideration the daycare center as well as Adam Clayton Powell School, which is there and the people, the mothers, the children, uh, the babysitters who have to move back and forth in front of that location. I'm very glad to hear that the owner is willing to put something else there, namely his landscaping business. I would welcome that. I need landscaping. And people who are standing on that strip with nothing to do could be trained in horticulture and help to beautify the neighborhood. So I do object to his current business plan, but if he's thinking about bringing landscaping and giving jobs to people who are aimlessly standing around so I can have my brothers do my lawn as opposed to someone else, I would appreciate that greatly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Merrill, do you have any questions for Ms. Lewis? If not, we'll save the comments for the end. Yes, yeah, the same question is for each one that says the same thing. What about my business brings increased crime that everybody is alluding to? There's nobody has stated what brings the crime. They're just stating that they don't want the crime that already exists. So if the crime that already exists in the community is there without my business, what about my business increases that? Well, what I'd like to say in response to that is in deference to the people who live within close proximity of your location. Uh, as I stated, we were part of the gardens that were at that location that were um, removed. Let me say removed because there was a different vision for development at that location. Not sure what that vision is, but this is not the vision. Um, the reason being the people who live within close proximity have witnessed what has gone on and you're not even open. Um, the fact of the matter is when our gardens were there, there were activities going on uh, over which the police department obviously had no control. Those people who are still standing on those corners on, and the strip uh, along the fence loitering, is not going to add to a peaceful, progressive situation uplifting the community. And if you have no idea that promoting is being done, activities are going on, and this is not a first just for your business, it's gone on along 75th Street for a while. But we really have a different vision. And if you're gonna do landscaping and give jobs to those men in the community, train them so they're not aimlessly standing there, I'd appreciate that. But you're not even open and we're having negative activity. And my final question for you, ma'am. Yes, you, sir. If you had a garden, with your vision there that still brought the unwanted people around where you had to shut it down. Anything that you put with your vision, according to what you're saying, will be desolated by the unwanted activity that goes on on that corner. But the difference between the garden and my building is my cameras can report directly to the police district and let them see the drug activity to get the evidence they need to get the individuals off the corner that you don't want there. But without anything there, they have no vision of what's going on. You get a call from the police station of drug activities, they have to get there and by the time they respond, they're gone. My camera actually grabs the footage of the people selling drugs, doing criminal activity and it helps them lock those individuals that's doing wrong up. 
to remove well, them. Well, we, we, we will campaign for the police department to put their cameras up. I was not aware that they don't have cameras. And I'm sure uh, I would have the strength and the breadth of all the community members in order to do that. But I hear what you're saying, but I do still object. Thank yes, you. Okay, let's move to the next objector, which I see is Attorney uh, Meredith Hammer. Hi, uh, Attorney Meredith Hammer. I live in the 2300 block of East 83rd Street. Um, I do swear to tell the truth during the proceedings. And I just wanted to say I agree with the previous objector. Brian, I believe you were talking and were muted if you were saying something. Oh, I'm, yeah, thank you, uh, Commissioner McDonald. Um, for uh, Miss, Miss Hammer, uh, I, was, I was trying to swear you in. Um, could you uh, state your, your name and address, please? This is uh, Meredith Hammer. I live in the 2300 block of East 83rd Street. And do you, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Okay. Please proceed. And again, uh, just Please, something I'm new. just going to say I agree with the previous objector for the record. Oh, That's th it. <laughs> thank you very <laughs> much. <long> time, so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, OK, uh, let's go to the next objector, which I believe is Dorothy Jean Fields. If you could unmute, please. OK, is that OK? Yes, could you please state your name and address, please? Okay, my name is Dorothy Jean Fields. My address is 7833 South Coles Avenue. I'm probably the oldest, if not, well, one of the oldest, if not the oldest resident in the community on this call. Oh, I did you. Not do you, hold on, before you continue, uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. Please proceed. And again, anything new? Uh, we, we, we don't need a okay. repetitive objection. Okay. I do agree with the previous objectors, but I do have uh, a few questions for uh, Mr. Morrell. My first question is that although you say you're totally unaware of this flyer that was sent out under your um, uh, business name, my questions are, uh, one, what, in your opinion, would be spa services, excluding massage and nail and uh, haircut? And two, why would it show, strippers show from 8 p.m. until? If you're a business owner, anything, as the previous uh, lady said, um, anything that is sent out under your name without your uh, um, input, indicates two things, either or they don't respect you and they wanted to promote their own activities or you're not uh, uh, aware of what's going on with your business because you're a figurehead and not an actual uh, owner. Also, if you are willing to uh, uh, just be a uh, um, barbershop, all right, then yes, we would. I would have no objection because it is necessary. But why would you be Pharaoh's gentleman's spa? Is, is right. that? Are you ready for me to answer? Uh, those would be uh, my major concerns. Yes, please answer. As in regards to the social media, um, I'm not sure if if a lot of you are aware of how social media work. You don't have, once you're, you can't control negative or positive advertisement on social media. For example, um, recently my cousin went viral for a childhood photo and the photo caption, if you wore these shorts, you, you would already be considered somebody. And she didn't do the photo, somebody else did it. It has over 500,000 comments over a hundred thousand shares and it wasn't in her control and it's out of her control. Um, as for me 
promoting spa. The reason why it's called a spa because it provides the nail and the massage portion and not just the barbershop portion. If it was just the barbershop, then I would have just called it Pharaoh's Barbershop. But due to the fact that I found it, for me personally, when I go on vacation, I hate to go with my feet looking raggedy. And I love to relax because my job, as I said, landscaping and snow removal, I get a lot of aches and pains. So I have to travel all the way up north to get a massage. And I have to sit in the um, ladies' nail uh, spa area for hours waiting on the long line because there's so many ladies that get their nails done. So by me providing it at a barbershop, it allows the opportunity for a gentleman to get out of his haircut chair and go get a pedicure or a manicure at the same time if the window is available for him to do so. But when you have to leave a barbershop to go to a nail shop and wait a couple of hours, then you had to drive 45 minutes all the way up north just to get a massage, it's strenuous. So I tried to accommodate all those into one and make it feasible for gentlemen and ladies that get their hair cut and get their feet done and enjoy a massage to be able to have one establishment to have that available to them. And we don't have that in our community. It's no massage place in the city of Chicago nearby. You have to go up all the way past downtown, up north, in order to get a massage. And I don't know anybody in our community that don't enjoy an actual relaxing massage. So why do we have to travel so far just to get one? Okay. Um, uh, oh. Okay, so uh, Mr. Morrell, as I said, I'm probably one of the oldest citizens on this line. I've lived here 51 years. And uh, there were all types of uh, different businesses, et cetera, that were open. And uh, so I, I think one of the main objections to it is this flyer that you said you had no control or input in. But uh, as the previous uh, person suggested, um, why don't you, uh, or as you suggested rather, why don't you uh, poll the community and actually see what our objections would be. My main one is to the uh, advertisement that you said you had no control over, but it is under your uh, uh, name, therefore you are held accountable for it. And it does show, strippers show ATM until, and that to me does not promote for a family orientated community. And yes, ma'am, I will. Um, get with the alderman to see the next and the uh, community chalmers over there on 71st to see the next town hall meeting to address the town in regards to my establishment. As for strippers, there will never be strippers in my establishment. As for me being open late, I will never be open late at my establishment. As for alcohol, there will never be alcohol at my establishment. I can't control social media presence. I can't. It's a lot of things on social media that I disagree with, that I wish social media wouldn't put up. But unfortunately, it's not in my control, nor is somebody doing ill promotions on my company's behalf that I didn't ask for. Okay. All right. Let's 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 move to the to the next um, ob objector. Um, which it looks like it is, um, is, is Veronica Kyle, is that, is that an objector? I am, but I already spoke. I just want to say this to the, uh, the gentleman who wants to do this. As far as massage in our community, there are several places that give nice massages. They're licensed. They're great. And again, come to the town hall. I, I'd love to see those owners there. Also, you might want to visit and you don't have to go up north to um, Next Man Up on 47th Street, an amazing black owned spa by a woman. Glad you could look through and see everything that's going on. Barbershop, nails, massage, has herbs, herbal therapy, all of that. 
go visit go look okay, go okay. all right all right okay all right oh let's 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 stop let's uh i i did not mean to go to an objector that's already spoken i i do want to get to the people who haven't spoken if you've already spoken you're you've had your time we're going to move on to the next objector uh which now looks to be melanie campbell good morning can you hear me i can uh can you state your name and address please my name is melanie campbell i live on the 7400 block of poles and actually and do um, you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings i do only something new, okay? We've been going at this for a couple hours now. I just need something new. We've heard a lot of objections. If you have an agreement, you can say you agree. Okay. But at this point, I do agree because um, someone just mentioned uh, some area of massage and nail places that I was going to uh, add. But okay. I do object, but I wish to uh, have Mr. Morrell come to a town meeting and speak with the people and, and we've heard that we've heard that and he said that he would um so uh mr morrell do you want to ask the same questions of this witness uh my, my only thing again it, it sounds great that it's something on 47 but it's not in a community where we're at i wasn't aware because i live in the community that you guys live in. You have a question, though, for the, for this for this objector. I, statements. We, yeah. You're going to get the last. My, my question last is. Part. My question is, if you're for that one and you're promoting that one, why are you against this one? Because of the area that has a history of loitering and interacting in many negative ways with businesses that do not promote peaceful activity. And for that reason, I have a strong objection. And my final question is, what is the unpeaceful activity you were insinuating on? And do you believe that without me being there, as you stated yourself, the loitering will stop? I cannot speak to whether the loitering will stop, but just um, I understand your position about the social media um, flyer. Um, but the fact that it is already out of control because someone has not notified you and who would have access to promote something like this and get in your business without you knowing about it says that something is not being communicated properly. Well, you said you can't attest to the loitering, not- I can attest to the loitering that I see on a regular basis. And, and so is there without me being there at all? Correct. Okay. Um, let's go to. Are there are there any objectors left that haven't spoken? If you're an objector that is not spoken, you can unmute and and announce your presence. Hi, my name is Natalie Perkins. Hi, Natalie. Can, can you state your name and address, please? My name is Natalie Perkins. My address is 7321 South Shore Drive. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Okay. Anything new, please feel free to add. I had one question um, of Mr. Morrell. Okay. He didn't answer it directly. He said that he has he's going to have massage there. Is this a clinical licensed massage therapist? Or is yes, this a pleasure therapist? Somebody who just, like you said, does lava, does this, does that. So this no. is somebody who would be licensed, clinically licensed. Yes, ma'am. It will be a clinically licensed. All my, all my workers in the shop are completely licensed for any activity that they do. The only person that won't be licensed is the dread tech because she doesn't need a license to do natural hair. But the masseuse, the nail tech, the, the barbers, everybody will be fully licensed. You can't be hired at my establishment without, be, without being fully licensed. And I'm sorry that future businesses leave the impression of a, a pleasure spa or whatever might be floating around in, the, in some people's idea of what my place is. But 
you not giving me an opportunity to show you that it's not. Everybody awesome. is under the assumption that it, it it already is without it even being open. Also, my comment is about your social media. Um, it's a little bit misleading. If somebody put up something about your business that you didn't like on social media, you could refute that. You could say this does not happen. So I haven't heard you say that. All you've said is I can't do anything. If you if you heard me um, when it was brought to my attention by the alderman, this is the first time I'm seeing this. So once I get off of here, I will send a report to Facebook. But I have sent several reports to Facebook for fraud advertisement of um, services provided by contractors. Um, but we're not talking about that, sir. I'm sorry no, to interrupt. I, we're not what, talking what about what that. What I'm saying is, I can send a report now that I know it exists, but at the end of the day, it's up to social media to actually enforce the report that I send. It's not a guarantee that I send a report and they're gonna- I'm not talking about a report. I'm talking about if somebody were doing that and you had complaints or people were, um, people did not feel this was the right thing. Your social media could counteract that if you'd like. And also you did state that this was maybe somebody that you are friends with or have worked with and just yes, reaching out to him. I to spoke to in regards to promotion. So um, anybody else might have heard of a spa being open under me and might have wanted to promote. I'm not sure, but I am going to address future promotions of making sure my actual vision is the only thing being promoted and not their vision of what they want to use to entice people to come out. And you also said something about the gardens that were there. The gardens were viable. It's not that they were not viable, but we needed support from our older person at the time. It takes a lot to do a community garden. Those were beautiful, viable spaces that we invited people in. We didn't have a fence. So we needed the support. It wasn't that you know, something's going to happen there anyway. No, we that, that wasn't. My statement was me helping bring back that garden and provide my services because um, she talked about how costly it was to actually put it there and how the, the loitering and the, and the hunk hanging around destroyed something that was great for the community. So my offer was to bring, help bring that back to the community and, and, and make it more structural to where it's it's better for the community. My last question is, you said that you did polling of people in the neighborhood and what was the radius of the polling? Was it just on the immediate street or my, did you go out to neighborhoods my, like Kyle's and um, Miss Lewis's and mine? Did you walk down the street? Did you, I mean. My statement to the board was, I'm willing to go around to the neighborhood mm -hmm. to do a polling. And if the neighborhood, majority of the neighborhood are against the barbershop, then I will change it to another business aspect. Because as I stated before, I'm buying the building, not renting a space to, to host a business in a space. So if the hearing allows me to get the entire community voice and not just the voice of 30 or 40, because we, we, we all know the community is of a thousand. So this is merely a, a small percentage of the community and representation. And so if the community actually feels that my um, location of business is not wanted, then I will respect the community's decision and turn my building into something else. But I, I want to be clear, my business vision isn't going to be let the community tell me what to invest in. So whether it's a barbershop or a restaurant or um, an activity center or a, a shelf, a, a food pantry or, or whatever, it's going to be my vision. And if I'm going to be opposed every time I have a vision to do something with something that I invested in, 
then that's not fair to the business investor because now you're 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 telling the business investor the only way you can come and, and do business as our community is by having a, a community say yay or nay. But we didn't say yay or nay to to the the gas stations um, that that's right there that conduct. So now we're, we're that. getting we're getting away from the this particular zoning issue, and I want to stay focused on this. Yes, sir. So that that's my answer to her question. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. Are there any other objectors that haven't spoken? Okay. Um, you know, um, Alder Alderman Mitchell, did, did you have anything more that you wanted to say on this matter? Before we go back to um, Mr. Merrill for his for his closing, yes, yeah. Um, first of all, I appreciate all the, uh, the residents in the community that came out. Um, contrary to what Mr. Morell said, they were not coached by my office, uh, which is a good thing. They came on their own, on their own free will, to defend something that they wholeheartedly believe in. Um, one thing. There's several things we want to make sure we do it clear on. This business does not exist right now. The zoning where this bid, where this property is located, does not allow any one of these type of businesses. It is B13, it is not allowed. The, app, the, the, the potential business owner entered into a lease situation with the actual and current owner of the property did not come to the community. I haven't spoke with him, did not talk to business affairs, consumer, consumer protection, um, and go through their training to talk about, you know, to guide him through the process on the building, did not talk with buildings, did not do any of that, which is, which is indicative of passionate would-be entrepreneurs. And I had several conversations with the city to make sure we do a better job in making that service in consultation accessible to avoid this kind of um, the, this kind of interaction because all of this should have been handled at my level at the community level. Um, Mr. Morell has repeatedly said that he owns the property. Not true. Looking at quarter of deeds and per the owner he does not own this property. He upon the lease time. He has supported the opportunity of an option to buy. That is not ownership. And I've had conversations with the owner who has been made aware of the plans and direction for that 75th Street corridor, which can be viewed and read in the South Shore Corridor study that was initiated by me with the Department of Planning in 2018. And, if, and in that document, over 500 community residents were surveyed to discuss about, to discuss the type of businesses that, that the community wanted and will be a benefit to the neighborhood. From that corridor study, we found that we have, the community has opined about we have enough personal service thing, uh, businesses like barbershops nail salons. There was no mention at any point of residents, whether they've been there two years or 70 years, about wanting to have any massage therapy, which is not a bad business. And, 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 and none of them are bad businesses, which brings me to this point. This is not, business owners need to realize Owning a business and establishing a business is not necessarily the right. It's a privilege. Our, 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 the South Shore neighborhood is saturated with homeowners and long-term residents and renters that have chosen that neighborhood for a, to, 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 to enjoy a high quality of life. And as you heard from many of the constituents on the call, that has been compromised for decades. And we are, we are now starting to go in a direction that put that stabilizes that area 
and so we can build on. The 75th Street corridor has a lot going on right now, but it's but but it, but it's slow because of court proceedings. A lot of our businesses are owned by the walkaway landlords, owners that are not in the U.S., owners uh, building property that is inside of land trusts, inside of trusts wrapped around the LLC. It is, it is, it is, it is, it has been a a constant challenge with my office, community members, and the city to unravel this to make these properties available for for, for ownership and subsequent establishment of business that provides goods and services to the community that the community needs, wants, desires, and deserves. We are sticking with that plan. Across the street, we have the daycare who has been there decades. We have the community, I mean, the uh, Villa and Windsor Park um, who has been there for decades, who has bought into the vision and purchased a lot across the street. So to kind of take site control to regulate some of the activity that was going on the, on the, on the, on the corridor. The city on lot, fenced in because we recognized there was a lot of loitering. The 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 building on 7500 South Shore Drive. We 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 work with the new ownership with and taking it to in the direction. Um, so we want to endure all the loitering and all the nefarious activity that has happened over there over the years. 70, 75th and Coles has been a area that we have endured much quadruple homicides. We had to, I had to make the decision to, to close that garden. I, I frequented that garden. I was there whenever we had events. But at three in the morning, when I take a drive over there, I got drug activity. I got people having sex on the corner. I got all type of things going on. And we have taken the stands in South Shore that we have to get our neighborhood back together. And that requires a very deliberate and focused attempt to bring, to, to, to create, to, to create more, well, recreate home ownership, to stabilize renting situations, to bring back those businesses and make them more attractive for investors. We are not against these businesses. They are not necessary at this time while we stabilize. We have a lot going on and we're gonna stay the course. I, 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 I welcome Ms. Mr. Morell. My office has always been, you commented that, you know, you something on 95th Street, I, I don't. My office has always been open for, for you. BACP has been open for you. The community has been. I've had several, several meetings. To, to date, I've had 300, over 360 um, um, uh, uh, constituent nights. You say you live in the neighborhood. I've had town halls. We have over 40 town halls, several of which the mayors were present at. We've had, we, have, we have had round tables with Department of Planning to discuss the, 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 the investment in the community. We have talked about neighborhood opportunity fund grants. We have talked about SPIP grants. We talked about, we have had a lot going on in South Shore, specifically 75th, where this dialogue that we had today was not necessary. All of this could have been taken care of prior, prior to this. So I, I, I'll, I'm starting to get along with it, but what, in closing, I'm, I'm asking the zoning board commissioners to not allow a special use permit to override the fact that these type of businesses is not allowed in the current zone. If down the line, this is something that the community wants, we will go through the process. We will, we will get his day, for lack of a better way to phrase it, his day in court and make his case. But that has not been done to this point. The fact that we have gone with this type of dialogue on this call talks, it speaks by volumes to that this is not a good situation. Absent the business, you coming in as a new business owner with this kind of sentiment is not the way you want to come in. So with that said, my office, my community, we're going to continue on and fight for the direction of the community, particularly 75th Street, with all the new programs and legislation that I have enacted and the city has supported me with to make the viable changes in our on our corridor that 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 we can first first attract the businesses that we want and need and then build upon that. So with that said, thank you, uh, ZBA commissioners.
Thank you, Alderman Mitchell. Uh, don't leave just yet because uh, yeah, Farrell, yeah, Farrell yes, does get does get a uh, an opportunity to ask you questions, Alderman. I understand. Mr. Merrill, if you have questions for the Alderman, uh, you can ask question again. If you've got a comment, let's save it till the end. Um, but if you have questions for the Alderman, uh, now is the time. Um, my questions are, one, I contacted your office several times since March. I called your office repeatedly over 10 times to try to schedule a sit down between me and you to discuss my vision for the building, the building that you insinuate that I don't own. It is under a private buyer's contract that's notarized between me and the owner for buying the building, just like the home residence that I'm buying. I know him personally. He owns the, the daycare across the street. So what I'm saying to you is, I have reached out to your office. I have tried to have a sit down with your office. I have in the past been to those meetings that you discussed, but those meetings I've been to only ended in conversation and no action. I went to the, the place on 71st and right before you get to Jeffrey and sat in the Black Caucus meetings and, and everybody that came and attended for the business owners to sit down and talk about grants and all that. I have attended all that. What I'm telling you is I reached out to your office personally several times and tried to schedule a meeting to come sit down and discuss my vision with my building, with you, and been turned away each time. I was told multiple times, leave an email. He'll respond back. I leave an email, I have the emails. But what I'm petitioning the board right now, according to what you're saying, is allow me another hearing date to go in the community and get the community's response on whether or not they want the spa. If they don't want it, we don't have to go any further. If they do, I will present the, the addresses and names and signatures of the people in the community. Mr. Mr. Farrell, to the extent that's a request for a continuance of this hearing, it's denied. Um, today was the day, you've, you've known that today was the hearing day and, and so it's being heard today. We're not gonna grant a continuance now, okay? We're gonna Understood. rule on this today. And, and then my, my question is, since this is my first time, after your ruling, whether it's for or against, at an appeal process, will I be allowed to petition the community and, and present it in front of the board? I'm not. I'm not here to give you legal advice or or, or, or answer. Yes, sir. Questions. Understood. Yeah. I, I got. I got a couple of numbers of the attorneys that you had um, on, on your uh, hearing earlier, so I will contact them and, and get the info. Okay. 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 So my, uh, so my question to Mr. Mitchell was, what happened to all those meetings I tried to schedule and with no avail, I, I got no sit down from March until June. Alder, Alderman Mitchell, um, you know, I, I do want to say before you respond, Alderman Mitchell, we're, we're, we're getting away know. from the zoning issue here. Right. Uh, so uh, this question, I, I can tell you, Mr. Mayor, I, 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 I know you called the office yesterday. We can take this offline. This is not the place for that. If you don't mind. Uh, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. Okay. 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 All right. Um, we are now, we're going back to, uh, and I said we were going to go back to Mr. Merrill, but I actually want to get to the supporter too, as well, because she, she does get a, a get get to get a, a last word in. Um, we are now done with the objectors. We're moving back to the applicant. Um, Alderman Mitchell, thank you for 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 your time here today. Um, and we're going to go to uh, Shauna uh, before we go to uh, Mr. Merrill for the final word. Um, but Shauna, uh, you've been waiting patiently, and I appreciate that. Um, this is your time to you know express something that hasn't been expressed already. It, you know, Mr. Merrill has said a lot in, in support of his application. 
If you have something more to add, then you can add it now. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go to Mr. Merrill for for a very brief closing. I'm going to ask for Mr. Mer for Mr. Merrill. Yes, thank you, Chairman Sanchez. I know you're like, oh my God, this is so much, but um. Uh, I just want to, again, I just want to say, like, I respect everybody that's been on the call and that's provided their feedback. I do recognize I am of a different different demographic than other folks on the call. No disrespect. Um, I want something over here, and we need this over here. Like, we have nothing but despair, so that's why we have crime. Prayers do not prevent crime. Policing does not prevent crime. Economic um, opportunity prevents crime. So if a flyer is stopping me and my homegirls from getting our nails done, getting a nice massage, if a flyer is stopping people from getting jobs that they can actually walk to, like myself, I can walk 10 minutes uh, to the said establishment, then this is just like a bunch of foolishness. Like we need something over here. And from the sounds of it, the only reason why it's not is because there's already a plan in place for that corridor. And I'm not a part of that plan. I do not represent the community in which has been said of South Shore. I represent people like myself, like my neighbor, the renters, uh, people of my age group, people just like me, like-minded like myself, that would lo love to support another Black-owned establishment, another Black man trying to make it and put other people on. Um, so I hope the board, I know this has been a lot of back and forth, but I hope that you guys recognize like there's literally nothing over here. So by saying you don't want anything over here, all you want more is crime because there's crime because there's nothing over here. So please give these people a chance um, I hope if it's open, I'm, I'm going to come and bring all my people. I'm literally, cause like I said, I can walk my neighbors and everybody. So I just want to thank you guys, uh, for letting us talk and, you know, I am in full support and, um, Alderman Greg, if this is not something you want, then you need to let people like myself know, because you don't even have a website up. Oh, it's oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. We're thing like the plan for the for the neighborhood i'm not a part of that plan i guess it's only a few people in south shore but i am a south shore resident and i want to be a part of those meetings and discussions so thank you okay all right thank you um mr merrill uh we're we're at the end now okay okay can you uh, give my expediter opportunity she was patiently oh, waiting oh uh, uh who's who's uh, it, oh is that's miss shelton yes yes, yes. anything Hi. anything new miss shelton I no yes. no no repeats, please. No, not at all. I just uh -huh. really want to stress that um I did sit down with Mr. Uh Mr. Derek and then we we're going over with the 24 hour watchman service. We're trying to cure all the violations to make it up living and habitable for the, the business that is going to be there um and provide those employments to the community. So that's that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. And um all right, uh, Mr. Merrill. I will keep it very brief because I have several other things uh, I needed to address on the calls that I missed. So I want to thank the committee for considering my application and hearing me out. And I also want to thank the opposers for taking the time out to give me opportunity to let them know what my actual vision is for the location. Um, I want to reiterate that I will petition the community and I will appeal whether it's for or against um, opening it at this current moment and get the uh, community actual, you know, the full community opinion on the, on the matter. Uh, I also want to state that I done heard several times from several objectors, including the, the police, the aldermen, that the crime that they're experiencing has been there well before I got there and it's going to be there well after I'm gone. So I'm not increasing the criminal activity. I'm actually trying to help decrease the activity. And by being living in fear of what already has took place without anything being there is not fair to a potential business owner to say that, oh, well, you're going to create this that's already here if you open up. I can't create something that already exists. Only thing I can do is improve 
or decrease it in value. And I already stated how I plan on improving my establishment being there in value of the community. And as for me still being there, whether or not it's a spa or whatever, I'm still going to be the owner of the building. And I'm still going to look to put something prominent in place in that building that creates generational wealth to come for my children and their children. So I'm not looking to sell. I'm not looking to negotiate. I'm looking to help improve. So with that being said, I hope the board takes real factual evidence that hasn't been presented. Everything has been hypothetical. He might bring an atmosphere. He might bring the wrong crowd. Um, somebody did something on his behalf that was out of his control. So therefore, even though he's not open, he's responsible for it. I'm not responsible for anything that takes place on social media. It's out of my control. So don't judge me based on a social media flyer. Judge me based on actual evidence of me actually disturbing the community or bringing chaos to the community, which I haven't. So that's what I would like to say, and that's what I would depart with. Okay, thank you very much. I want to thank everybody, uh, Mr. Merrill, uh, all the supporters, all the objectors, the aldermen uh, for coming in. Uh, we've heard a lot on this matter, and we are going to take it all under advisement. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah, uh, do I stay on to the go end? to the board for questions? Oh please? God, yeah, sorry. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Toya. Uh, I, I, I got so wrapped up in this, um, but he, Commissioner Toya is correct. D does that, any of the board members have uh, questions for, uh, for anyone? I, I do want to make a statement to the uh, 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 person applying for the uh, special use. So obviously you're part, you, you know, you you know the neighborhood, you're part of the neighborhood. I've been sitting on this board now for over 12 years. And I usually want to hear what the neighborhood has to say. That means the neighborhood groups, the business groups, the aldermen, and on this one, also the police. Obviously, I, I don't think you communicate, communication is the key to success. I'm not sure you communicated enough with the business groups and the neighborhood groups and the aldermen and the police department before you came to the board. Um, because I've heard a lot of passionate um, testimonies from people don't think this fits into the character of the neighborhood. So again, I, I think you need to go back to the neighborhood and build some relationships with the neighborhood groups, the police, uh, the business groups and the aldermen. That's just my opinion. And I just wanted to go on record saying that because there was a lot, a lot of testimony here and I think we've got it from all sides, business, neighborhood, aldermen, and police. That's just my opinion. Thank you. My, my question was, do I wait after this is over to know the decision or will I be emailed a decision? Uh, well, we're, we're gonna vote. Uh, uh, we're, at the end of all the cases today, we're going to go into closed session to discuss all the cases, and then we'll come out and we'll vote. So if you if you remain uh, uh, watching the live stream, you can you can see the vote at the end of the uh, day. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, okay, and just to make clear, are, are there any other questions from the from the board? Uh, yes, Chair, I have just a couple. Okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, for Mr. Merrill, Mr. Merrill, I just wanted to confirm a couple details um, while we have you here today under oath. Are you the sole owner of Pharaoh's Gentleman Spa? Yes, I am. Okay. So no one other than you owns any part of that business? I haven't. I'm working on selling 30% uh, of the share to a childhood friend that decided he wanted to invest, which is what the meeting um, previously that was discussed it was about. And I have other business partners that's interested in purchasing, but they was waiting to see what was the actual decision today, whether or not they would go forward. And those business partners um, own several residents in that community 
as far as 73rd and Yates, um, as I spoke across the street at the daycare, um, all throughout that seven ward, they, they own property. And I have a very strong friend relation. So I have um, future endeavors, depending on which way this hearing goes, to have other investors come on board. Sure, thank you. I was curious about the current state. Um, and then as it relates to this June 17th, 2020 event, were you on the premises that day, sir? Yes, I was at a business meeting and there was that's why I asked the officer and I asked um, the other officer who came out because I was there. There was no strippers. Who, what witness or what cease and desist order took place to say that something was operational or out of the norm? It was a business meeting um, that was hosted for investors to see the actual vision of the place um, to come forward. So when the hearing was active and finished, finalized, whether or not they were going to come on board, which was months ago. And yeah, as I sir, said, sir, I'm sorry to interrupt. We certainly heard that story before. I just wanted to confirm just a few minor details as we go through this. So yes, I was there. Um, yeah. So my other question is, how many people were on premises on June 17th while you were there? 25. Did you write down all their names? I have a list of uh, invites. Yes, that okay. it was invite only and it was instructed to the security. Anybody not on the invite list uh, is not allowed in. Were people drinking on June 17th at that location? No, they alcohol? Wasn't. there was. It's your testimony. There was no alcohol that day. It was no alcohol that they served to anybody, whether somebody had a drink prior to coming, which I don't think they should or, or did, it was not under my control. But as far as actual alcohol being served or purchased at my establishment, that did not happen. Were there spa services provided that day? Uh, yes. It wasn't an actual, um, it was an introduction. It wasn't a, a full service. It was an introduction of the, the dread tech, um, the nail tech, and, and one of the featured barbers. Unfortunately, one of the barbers uh, was killed and he, he didn't, he wasn't allowed to uh, host himself to the investors. But yes, it, it was a massage person there that had um, the investors sit in a chair for a, a shoulder massage. And she showed her vision because the room is it, nothing is ready. So the room isn't ready to host massages or anything like that. We're waiting on you guys to make a decision to apply for the permits. So it wasn't a, a lay down or a robe type of massage deal. It was basically a shoulder massage explaining her vision to um, the investors for the um, massage room. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry to hear about the gentleman that was killed, but I, I do appreciate the additional information. Thank you. No problem. Okay, any other questions from the board? No, I just wanna make one more statement that as you all know, uh, I just want you to know, Ms. Merrill, that, that we're here to make zoning decisions. What happened on June 17th is not how I make a decision. My decision is zoning. That's we're a zoning board of appeals. And I just wanna know if this fits into the character of the neighborhood. And that's what I'm looking at. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we are going to take this matter under advisement, uh, and I want to thank everyone for their time. Uh, it, at this time, we're going to we're going to take a, a, a short recess. This isn't going to be lunch yet. It's too we're we're, we're too far behind for lunch right now. But uh, I do move that we take a recess to twelve twenty. Uh, Commissioner Toya seconds. Uh, Commissioner uh, Esposito. Yes. Commissioner McDonald. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Uh, yes. Okay, I vote yes. We are uh, uh, in recess until 1220.
Okay. I move that we reconvene this meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, and we are back. Uh, next up is calendar number 347-22-S. This is 1359 West Berry. All right, uh, while we're getting everybody promoted, uh, if there is uh, anybody here in support or objection, please raise your hand and we will uh, get you promoted. All right, I can see we do have Javier Nunez and Joe Ryan. And we've got Councillor Augustin. Let me get the witnesses uh, sworn. Uh, Mr. Uh, Nunez, uh, yes, could, sir. You say, could you state your name and address, please? Javier Antonio Nunez, 2501 Kenilworth Avenue, Wilmette, Illinois. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Joe Ryan, could you state your name and address? You're you're muted right now. Joseph M. Ryan, MAI President, LaSalle Appraisal Group with offices at 9455 South Hoyne Avenue in Chicago. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. And the board recognizes your expertise based on many past appearances. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, let me read the uh, Department of Planning and Development's recommendation. This is the recommendation for 347-22-S. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish residential use below the second floor to convert an existing ground floor commercial space to a business live work unit in an existing three-story mixed use building provided the development is consistent with the design and layout of the plans and documents dated October 20th, 2022, prepared by Axios Architects and Consultants. Councillor Augustin, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, there are no objectors on this one, so you can proceed with the short form. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. For the record, again, my name is Fred Augustin. I'm with the Law Offices of Augustin Associates, LLC. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, X and Z Properties, LLC. The applicant owns the property at 1359 West Berry Street. It is currently, um, that address does, is a commercial space within an existing three-story mixed-use building. The building, more specifically, the commercial space will remain. The plan is to establish a business live-work unit within this space. Property is zoned B11. Um, and in order to get a business live work unit within a B11, uh, we need a special use approved. Uh, with me um, this afternoon on behalf of the applicant, Javier Nunez, and our appraiser, Joseph Ryan, and just uh, Mr. Chairman, um, our architect, Bill Kakalias, he is. Um, he has several matters on Zoom today. If the board does have any questions, he's available to answer any questions in terms of design. So I just. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Nunez, first witness. Um, Mr. Nunez, please state your name and address for the record. Javier Antonio Nunez, 2501 Kenilworth Avenue, Wilmette, Illinois. And you are the authorized representative of the applicant, X and Z Properties, LLC? Yes. Applicant does own the property at 1359 West Berry, is that correct? Yes. And you are seeking to establish a business live work unit within this space, is that correct? Yes. Uh, you executed an affidavit, which I submitted to the board on your behalf. Is that right? Yes. And if we continued your testimony, we'll be consistent with your affidavit. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Thank you. Second witness is Joe Ryan. Uh, Mr. Ryan, please state your name and address for the record. Joe, you're mute. You're on mute again. Joe, you need to unmute. Sorry, <laughs> Joseph Ryan, 
9455 South Wynn Avenue in Chicago. Um, Mr. Ryan, you've reviewed the subject property and the, and the neighborhood um, as it relates to the proposed business live work unit, is that correct? Yes. And you have prepared a written report with your findings, is that correct? That's correct. And in addition, you executed an affidavit, which uh, my office submitted on your behalf to the board, is that correct? Yes. And if we continued, your testimony would be consistent with your affidavit and um, your report, is that correct? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no further questions of our witnesses. Um, we're here to answer any questions for the board. Thank you, Councilor Augustin. I, I have a question for uh, Mr. Nunez. Mr. Nunez, could you tell us exactly what your relationship is to X and Z Properties, LLC? I'm 100% owner and uh, manager. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other uh, questions from the board? Hearing none, I think we have what we need on this one. We'll take it under advisement. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, next up is calendar number 348-22-S. This is 2401 West 59th Street. Chair, just for the record, I'm recused on this one. Mr. Okay. McDonald, thank you. Okay, let's see. All right, and if you're here in support or objection, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. Okay, I think. I think we have everybody uh, here. Let me um, let me get the witnesses sworn in. <clears throat> Let's start with uh, with Randy Morrissey. Could could you state your name and address, please? Uh, yeah, Randy Morrissey. Address is nineteen hundred Chippingham Road in Woodridge, Illinois six zero five one seven. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, Jason Jarrett, could you state your name and address, please? Uh, yes, Jason Jarrett, the last name spelled J-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, uh, with offices at 141 West Jackson in Chicago. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. And uh, Dana Baker, could you state your name and address, please? Uh, Dana Baker, the address is 1251 Elmridge Drive, Emilia, Ohio. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Um, I can, actually, I can see we have uh, someone from the uh, from the 16th uh, ward. Uh, could you unmute? Uh, good afternoon, Brandon Bradford, Chief of Staff of the 16th Ward Service Office. Are you uh, are, are you here in uh, in objection or support? Support. Okay, great. Uh, do you want to speak at the beginning or, or at the end? It's it's your 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 call. Uh, I'll just speak at the beginning since you have me now, if that's fine. That yeah, that's fine. Uh, could you just again, for the record, state your name and role, please? Okay, Brandon Bradford, Chief of Staff, Sixteen Forward Service Office, um, and, Alderman. Oh, do do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so the alderman um, and the community is in support of this much needed business. Uh, Fifth Third is coming to br bring a bank to the corner of 59th and Western, which was an old pizza hut. Um, so again, the due diligence has been done to the community members within 250 feet. There have been several community members held. Fifth Third has actually come out to community members and presented to members of the community as well as the alderman's office. Um, and the alderman is in full support of this action. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for thank you for coming. Um, before I turn it over to the uh, to the attorney for the applicant, I do want to read the uh, Department of Planning and Development's recommendation. This is the recommendation for 348-22-S. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed single lane drive through to serve a proposed Fifth Third Bank 
provided the special use is issued solely to the applicant, Fifth Third Bank National Association, and the development is consistent with the design and layout of the site plan and landscape plan dated March 7, 2022, prepared by Terra Engineering LTD, and the floor plan and elevations dated April 4, 2022, prepared by Moody and Nolan. Okay, Councillor, there are uh, no objectors, so you can proceed with the short form. Thank you, Chairman Ch Sanchez, and thank you very much to the members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, as already has been sworn in, has been Randy Morsey. Uh, oh, first, my name is Lenny Asaro. I'm a partner at the law firm of Fagri, Drinker, Biddle, and Reith at 320 South Canal, uh, Suite 3300, Chicago, Illinois, 60606. Uh, I represent the applicant, Fifth Third Bank. The owner of the subject property is SCG Investments, LLC. They provided a written uh, letter consenting to this application. Um, as has been sworn in is Randy Morrissey, Vice President, Real Estate uh, Manager at Fifth Third Bank, Dana, Banker, uh, Dana Baker, Architect and Project Manager of Moody Nolan, and Jason Jarrett, Certified Planner and Senior Associate, Oakland and Kissel and Associates, Inc. Chairman Sanchez, in lieu of uh, rereading uh, what you've already stated as the, the purpose of our application, I will then proceed to just ask a, a very brief direct examination of Randy Morrissey, and then the other two witnesses have submitted affidavits, so I'll do the extremely short form with them. So with, with that, may I proceed with Mr. Morrissey? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Morrissey, um, um, you are the Vice President, uh, Real Estate at Manager at Fifth Third Bank, correct? That is correct. And Fifth Third Bank is a diversified financial services um, uh, a company with um, banking centers across the United States in many states, including Illinois, correct? That is correct. And the subject property is located at, at the uh, southwest corner of 59th and Southwestern Avenue? That is correct. And Fifth Third Bank is under contract to purchase the property contingent on obtaining uh, the approval of this special use application, correct? That is correct, yes. And um, has the owner of the subject property provided, uh, strike that, um, uh, did the bank de desires to develop the property into um, an approximately 1,900 square foot single story uh, bank branch building with a drive up automated um, teller machine facility, correct? Yes. Lobby hours and drive through hours will be Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., uh, Friday 9, to, uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Saturday 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., correct? Yes. Is the expected number of customers per day for the ATM drive through uh, seven per hour? Yes. And is the anticipated proportion of customers who will use the drive through 50%? Yes. Is the pro projected peak hour customer traffic volume from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Fridays? Yes. And is the expected number of customers per day for the remote drive through three per hour or approximately 25 per day and then seven per hour during peak times? Yes, correct. And is the expected proportion of customers who will use the drive through um, uh, approximately 50%? Yes. And is the projected peak hours for the customer traffic volume 2 p.m. to 4 p.m.? Correct, yes. Thank you. And um, um, with that, no further questions of Mr. Morrissey. Um, Chairman Sanchez, I would just now like to ask very abbreviated questions to Dana, Ms. Dana Baker. Sure. Yeah. If you can have them swear to their affidavits and then we'll open it up to the board for questions. That's exactly what I intend to do. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Baker, uh, did you review uh, and sign an affidavit in support of uh, a proposed findings of fact with respect to this application? I did. And if you were called to testify today to the matters contained in your affidavit, uh, would you testify to the same uh, information in that affidavit? I would. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Turning now to Mr. Jason Jarrett. Yes. Uh, Mr. Jarrett, um, did you um, uh, review and sign an affidavit in support of uh, the proposed findings of fact in connection with this application? I did. And did you also prepare a written report expressing your opinions and bases for your opinions in support of the application? Yes, I did. And if you were called to testify um, to the matters contained in your affidavit and in your report, uh, would you testify to the same uh, here today in this hearing? Yes, I would. With that, Chairman Sanchez, I have no further questions, um, but would respectfully request um, that the application be approved. Thank you. Any questions from the board?
Hearing none, we will take this matter under advisement. Thank you for your time. Thank you all. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to call calendar number 349-22-S. This is 2145 Northwestern. If you are uh, here in support or objection, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Councillor Pierre. Barnes. Good afternoon. Or yeah, good afternoon, Excuse actually. Me. It I should know. be morning, but it's afternoon already. <laughs> we went over the hill. We went over the hill. Um, I just wanted to speak up because I um I had messaged your staff that the applicant um and his wife will actually be joining through their telephone. Um I provided the phone number. I hesitate to do so on the record. Sure. Um, but so you might want to look for a three one two. I think we I think we may have them right now. Did they? Okay. Did they get advanced? Okay. Okay, we're here. Oh, wonderful. Excellent. Good morning, Councillor um, Barnes. Do, I'm sorry. <laughs> Councilor Ryan. Barnes, do you do you intend to have both of them testify? So, um, the applicant, Mr. Amel, there, um, he has a little bit of difficulty, um, language between the languages. So his wife, Veronica, is joining us just in case there are any translation issues. Um, since we're doing an abbreviated presentation, though, um, and everything is in my findings of fact, hopefully there should be no issue. Okay. Um, and I can introduce them on the record. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let me. I'd like to get uh, Mr. I'll get him. I'll get him sworn. I'll get Mr. Amelbear sworn in as uh, to testify, and I'll get uh, Mrs. Amelbear sworn in as a translator if if needed. Does that sound That's good? Perfect. I love it. Yep. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Amelbear, could you state your name and address, please? Yes, sir. My name is Hector Amelbear. And my address is 2182 North Maplewood Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60647. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Amelbear, could you state your name and address, please? Veronica Moreno. And my address is 2182 North Maplewood Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60647. And um, I guess first of all, is the uh, is 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 Mr. Amelbear's uh, language is it is it Spanish? It's Spanish, yes. Okay. So uh, do you swear or affirm to accurately translate English to Spanish and Spanish to English? Yes, I swear. Thank you. Uh, and Joe Ryan is already sworn. Uh, so you can go ahead with, with the short form. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair and esteemed commissioners. I'm happy to be here this afternoon on behalf of the applicant, El Magico LLC, which is solely owned and managed by Mr. Amelbear. Um, we are here today seeking a special use, which would allow Mr. Amelbear to locate, establish, and operate a barbershop within the existing single commercial storefront at the subject property. Um, Mr. Amelbear is under a lease, or I'm sorry, he's executed a letter of intent, which will allow him to lease the subject commercial unit conditioned upon approval of the subject special use. We are appearing before this board um, with the informed and expressed written consent of the property owner, um, Heinz, Partners LLC, um, who is the beneficiary of the lease agreement. Councillor Barnes, uh, I'm sorry, Councillor. Before I before you go any further, can I read the? Uh, I forgot to read the Department of Planning's uh, recommendation. Can I can I do that? Of course, of course. All right, thank you. Sorry, sorry, I forgot. Um, okay, so this is the recommendation uh, of the Department of Planning Development for 349-22-S. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed barbershop. Thank you. Um, and thank you, DPD. 
Um, Mr. Amalver has um, over 24 years of experience as a licensed barber or a certified barber, excuse me. Um, for the past 13 or so years, he has been working with his brother um, just west to the west in the a neighboring um, neighborhood, Logan Square. Um, and he has finally gotten an opportunity to open his own shop, um, which would be at the subject property. He's, this has been a dream of his for quite some time. Um, so with that, again, all of the operating characteristics and everything are in my findings of fact, but we're happy to answer questions in that regard. I will just quickly put Mr. Amalbear back on the record um, just to attest to his affidavit, and then we can get Joe Ryan in and out and answer questions. So um, thank you. <laughs> Veronica, if you can please get um, Mr. Amalbear back on the record, um, can you just ask him if he would attest to or if he can confirm that all of the statements that were made in his affidavit and in the corresponding findings of fact are accurate? Ella, ella dice que si todo lo que tú pusiste en tu affidavit es correcto y, es, y contesta. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and if he were to continue to testify here at this hearing today, would his testimony be consistent with the statements in those documents? Y en caso de que tuvieras que presentar tu testimonio, ¿tu testimonio va a concordar con el, lo que ya dijiste? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Ryan, if you can quickly I'm here. Go. Hi. Um, uh, Mr. Ryan, you were retained by the applicant to evaluate the subject property and the proposed special use for a barbershop at this location and to make a determination as to whether or not the proposed operations at this particular site meet all of the standards and requirements for a special use as um, set forth in the current zoning ordinance. Is that right? That's correct. And did you have an opportunity to perform those evaluations? I did. And, and um, is it true that you were able to um, memorialize your observations and opinions in a expert report that was submitted to the board prior to this hearing? Yes. Thank you. If you were to continue to testify, or excuse me, in summary and in your findings, did you conclude that the proposed barbershop at this particular location meets all of the standards and requirements for a special use? It does, yes. Thank you. And if you were to continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements that were made in your report? Yes, it would. Thank you so much. Um, Chair, I am happy. We're happy to answer any questions that the commissioners and or you may have. Thank you. Any questions from the board? We have what we need. We'll take it under advisement. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Thank next you. up is calendar number uh, 3, 350-22-S and 351-22-Z. And if you are here in support or objection, uh, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. And Mr. Oh, no, I think actually all of my witnesses are appearing by video now. So <laughs> I oh, excuse me. From um, the applicants end, we should have Amber and Tom Ginsburg, our project architect, Charlie Vins, and then our MAI certified appraiser, who I already see, Mr. Terry O'Brien. Okay. I think we have everybody. Let me um, let me swear the witnesses in. Uh, let's start with Amber Ginsburg. Could you state your name and address, please? 
Amber Ginsberg, 5200 South Ellis, apartment 502, Chicago, Illinois, 60615. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I swear to tell the truth. Thank you. Uh, Tom Ginsberg, could you say your name and address, please? Yes, Tom Ginsberg, uh, same address, 5200 South Ellis, apartment 502, Chicago, 60615. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth mm -hmm. in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Vins, could you state your name and address, please? Yes, uh, Charlie Vins, 2567 East 71st Street, Chicago, Illinois, uh, 60649. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Mm -hmm. I do. Thank you. And Terrence O'Brien, could you state your name and address, please? Uh, Terrence O'Brien, apostrophe B R I E N, maintain offices at 145 Revere Drive, Northbrook, Illinois, professional real estate appraiser. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, sir. Thank you. And we recognize your expertise based on many past appearances. Thank you. Before I hand it over to Councillor Barnes, I'm going to read the uh, Department of Planning and Development's recommendation. <laughs> This is <clears throat> for calendar number 350-22-S. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed private arts club with one artist dwelling unit on the ground floor and one dwelling unit on the second and third floor provided one, the special use is issued solely to the applicant, Bezalel Art Club, the peak capacity of the club is no more than 40 occupants. And uh, three, the development is consistent with the design and layout of the site plan, first floor plan, elevations, and two sheets, and landscape plan dated April 14, 2022, and second and third floor plans dated October 14, 2022, all prepared by the structural group LTD. And with that, Councillor, uh, we do not have any objectors on this one so you can proceed with the short form wonderful thank you so much <clears throat> um, once more for the record <clears throat> my, my name is sarah barnes and i'm an attorney with the law offices of sam banks located right here in chicago illinois um, i'm super happy to be here this afternoon on behalf of the applicants um basilel art club and narrow bridge llc which are both owned and managed by Mr. and Mrs. Ginsburg. Um, for the sake of everyone's time um, and efficiency, I am gonna do this short form as suggested. Um, I would, however, this is such a passion project. It's over two years in the making for the applicants. So, um, and Amber is just such a powerful force in social activism and the arts world, I would, um, recommend that any of you, if you have some time later, um, Google her uh, and look at some of her work. It's truly inspiring. Um, so with that, um, also here with us today, we do have, as the chair um, indicated, we have our project architect, Charlie Vins, and our MAI certified appraiser, Mr. Terry O'Brien. The proposal that brings us before this honorable board this afternoon puts an even more interesting twist on the adaptive reuse and reactivation of an old abandoned church property. Towards these ends, thank you, the subject site, which is located in the middle of a vibrant multifamily residential block in the West Woodlawn neighborhood, is improved with a three-story building that was originally constructed in the 1920s. For the past almost century and up until the COVID pandemic forever altered our views of socialization, the building was occupied by various different religious congregations as a place of religious assembly. The building was abandoned a few years ago by the most recent of those congregations. The applicants, Mr. and Mrs. Ginsburg, who are both educators and mentors at a university in the immediate area, acquired the property and the building um, shortly after its abandonment with the intent and desire to reactivate the existing improvements through a truly community-based program with a focus on the arts, environment, and social activism. 
Accordingly, for the past couple of years, the applicants have been working with Alderman Taylor and her community liaisons, as well as with the city's Department of Planning and Development towards the programming, programming for the revitalization of this site, which such programming calls for the establishment of a private arts club on and within the first floor of the subject building, which is specifically intended to service artists and creative minds with their roots on the south side, um, with some first pre preference being given and offered to residents of the Woodlawn neighborhood as well as the 20th Ward. It is on um, this aspect of the proposed programming, the private arts club, which triggers the subject special use. Um, in a further and relevant brief summary, the programming for the adaptive reuse and reactivation of this property also calls for the interior build out of the second and third floors of the subject building as a single duplex unit, which if approved will become the primary residence for Mr. and Mrs. Ginsburg. Due to the century old footprint of the existing building, which occupies the entire depth of the subject site with no off-street parking accommodations, certain variations are required to permit the establishment and occupancy of the single dwelling unit. For that aspect of the project, um, I will defer to Mr. Vins for any additional um, testimony. So with that and no further ado, I will turn the virtual microphone <clears throat> back over to um, Ms. Ginsburg. Uh, are you there? Thank you. Hi, thank you so much. And I'm sorry to deflate and make this anticlimactic, but <laughs> you've been sitting here all morning as well. So we are going to keep it short. Um, but Ms. Ginsburg, can you just restate again your name and address for the record? Amber Ginsburg, 5200 South Ellis, apartment 502, Chicago 60615. Thank you. Um, and if the proposed relief is granted here today, both the special use and the variations, again, it's your intention that you would reside within the second and third floor of the existing building, and that would be your primary residence. Is that correct? Absolutely, yes. Right, and then you would be very actively involved in the private arts club that would occupy the first floor. Is that also true? Yes. Thank you. And towards that end, um, the club will be membership by membership only. Is that right? Yes. And you will operate pursuant to a very precise um, and codified rule of operations with guidelines and screening for all of your members. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, and as read into the record by the chair, um, it is your intention and commitment to cap the capacity, the occupancy of the actual arts club to 40 members at one time. Is that correct? Yes, but that your actual membership, your overall membership in the club might exceed 40 members and you hope to grow over time. Yes. Great. And I would make that clarification, um, Mr. Chair, for the record, because the findings of fact did contain an indication that membership might be capped at around 50, but that's to begin. Um, obviously, the intention is to continue to service the community and to grow with the community. So again, the actual membership might um, get larger, but occupancy will be capped at 40. It's noted for the record. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, with that, then, Ms. Ginsburg, um, prior to these proceedings, you were provided with a copy of those findings of fact, as well as an affidavit. If you were to continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements made in those um, documents? Yes, it would. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure if you want me to go through all my witnesses and then questions, or if you wanted to take any questions witness by witness. We'll do, we'll do questions at the end so you can okay. go through all of them. Perfect. Um, 
Mr. Otkinsberg, if you'd like to quickly also represent yourself, um, I would like to get you on the record. Great, I'm Tom Ginsberg, and again, the address 5200 South Allen, number 502, Chicago 60615. And is your um, testimony con consistent to that of Ms. Ginsberg? Yes, precisely. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and to um, any further testimony that you would provide would be consistent with the statements that were made in the findings of fact and supporting affidavits? Yes, correct. Thank you so much. <clears throat> um, and then next we will go to Mr. Vins. Let's do the project architect next, please. Uh, yes, uh, so with regard to the hardships, um, uh, well, the variation for the um, rear yard setback, which is non-conforming, um, the required rear yard setback is uh, 562 square feet. Um, providing that would require, you know, actually um, removing the rear portion of the building, which is not what we want to do. Um, however, there is a, a north um, side yard um, that is part of the property that is um, where we're putting a two-car garage and provides uh, 2,554 square feet of open space. Uh, and the garage also has a roof deck, which, which would um, uh, count as open, open space for a total of 3,154 square feet of open space. And so um, that is what we are seeking the variance for. Thank you so much. So in actuality, although it is not under the strict application of the zoning ordinance, although that 200, or sorry, 2,000 plus square feet of open space um, will be fully landscaped um, and permeable. That does not count towards the calculable and required <clears throat> rear yard open space. Is that correct, Mr. Bin? That's correct. Um, and again, it would be impossible to actually locate any amount of the required rear yard open space on this site due to the existing footprint of this century old <laughs> building. Is that right? That's correct. Thank you so much. Um, and Ms. Ginsburg did not get an opportunity to um, attest to this or testify to this, but that um, 2000 plus square feet of open space along the north side of the building is actually gonna be a new community garden, um, fully landscaped and beautiful with I think fruits and vegetables. Um, so if you have questions in that regard, we're happy to answer them. Um, so then Mr. Vins, you, I know you worked very diligently for many, many months, almost a year with um, the Department of Planning and Development towards the, the programming for the adaptive reuse of this um, property. Is it your professional opinion that the design and programming that you created um, meets all of the standards and requirements for a variation as set forth under the current zoning ordinance? It is. Thank you. And if you too um, continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements that were made in the findings of fact, as well as your corresponding affidavit? They would be. Thank you so much. Last, but absolutely certainly not least, Mr. O'Brien. Can you please go back on the record, sir? Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. O'Brien, you were retained by the applicant um, to evaluate the subject property and the um, immediate area and to make an evaluation and determination as to whether a proposed private arts club on the first floor of the existing building meets all of the standards and requirements for a special use as set forth under the current zoning ordinance. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. And did you have an opportunity to visit the property and to make those evaluations and to develop conclusions based on your observations? Yes, I uh, inspected the property on May 15th of this year. And then uh, this past Wednesday, I went out once again to refresh my memory. Thank you. Um, and Mr. O'Brien, is it true that your observations and the findings deducted from the same were memorialized in a report that you prepared and tendered to this board prior to this hearing? Yes, within the report, I addressed the criteria for special use. I also addressed the criteria for a variation. I just would like to make one comment. Uh, 
on page five of my report, I want you to know the subject lot is a substandard depth. It's only 120.5 feet. I made the mistake of saying it was 80 feet, so I was off. It's still a substandard lot, but the depth isn't 80 feet. It's 120.5. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Um, you're not allowed to make any more errors in your findings. You're supposed to be a superhero. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you for the clarification. You sound like my wife. <laughs> um, <laughs> with that, then, Mr. O'Brien, is it your professional opinion that the public arts, or sorry, the private arts club on the first floor um, and the programming for the adaptive reuse of the existing building does in fact meet all of the standards and criteria for a special use and for the requested variation as set forth under the current zoning ordinance? Yes, my opinion meets all the criteria for the variation as well as the special use. Thank you. And aside from the correction to the discrepancy in your report, if you were to continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements and the findings that were made in your report? Yes, they would. Thank you. And then just lastly, for the record, um, Mr. Chair and our esteemed commissioners, um, I did forget to mention uh, Alderman Taylor did provide her letter, a letter of support um, this morning, actually. She apologized. She was caught up in the budget hearing, so she didn't have an opportunity to send it over until this morning. I'm not sure if it made its way to everybody, but staff was provided with a copy of that letter of support um, for the record. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions from the board? Yeah, I, this is Commissioner Toy. I have one question for Mr. Ryan. You said this was a short lot and you gave us your corrections, which is great. All I like to know when I hear short lots, is it the whole block or is it just this particular land that's a short lot? Uh, Mr. Toya, the name is O'Brien, not Ryan. Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> my mistake. That's quite all right. Sorry. The entire block is is short. Yes, I, I, I. in the future, could you mention that or I'll just keep asking the same question? I, I will try to, yes. Thank you, Mr. I'll remember your name if you remember that. How's that? I'll remember Deal? your name. <laughs> All right. You, re you remember the short lots and I'll remember your name. Thank you. Okay. I usually catch that one, Commissioner Toya. That's on me. Oh, you it know is. I'm going to catch this, Sarah. You know it I'm going to question. But I, I like being corrected. I like being educated. I will not forget Mr. O'Brien's name as long as he doesn't forget the short lots. And I won't forget. Yeah, so, and that one, that, it, that same line of um, facts are in the findings of fact, just for you, yep. Mr. Toya. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. You. And, 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 Brian's, and Brian's thinking, no, he's reminding me of my dad right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know your dad, Brian. That's why I'm <laughs> uh, you know, uh, just on this point, though, um, regarding the, the, the short lot, uh, fair to say that uh, the, aside from the short lot, the hardship would be the, uh, the existing building and the fact that you'd have to actually remove a part of the building, true? That is, yeah. So I think even it's the orientation of the existing building, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the board? Uh, this is Good. Commissioner Esposito. Just quick question, um, and I apologize if, in fact, you mentioned this already. Uh, uh, to the applicant, when are you hoping to complete the project and open the club? That's a touchy subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just um, maybe. Maybe I can speak to it. Um, you know, obviously it depends on getting the permits, depends on the result of this hearing. Um, sure. Our current estimate is that if we were able to move forward, uh, you know, right away with permits in December, we would be able to complete it by August. Um, that, that's what we would hope. But of course, it all depends on many different city departments and what they would allow us to do. Of course. Okay, good to know. Thank you. And I can confirm that that target has changed about 30 times throughout the last two years. So fingers crossed. Okay, any other questions from the board? All right, uh, no other questions. So we will take this matter under advisement. Thank you so much. Enjoy the weather if you ever get out of here, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to move to 
352-22-Z and 353-22-Z. This is 2820 West Lindale. If you are here in support or objection, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. Okay, I think we have everybody here. Uh, let me get the witnesses sworn. And let's start with uh, Vladimir Galilee. Could you uh, unmute and then uh, state your name and address, please? Um, yes, hi, uh, Vladimir Galilee, 250 Sylvan Road, Glencoe. Illinois 60022. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. And then Chris Dassey, could you state your name and address, please? My name is Christopher Dassey, licensed architect. My address is 5930 Holman Avenue, Hammond, Indiana. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. All right. Thank you. And then Councillor Barton, uh, we do not have any objectors on this one, so you yes. can proceed with the short form. I understand. Um, thank you. Um, for the record, my name is Timothy Barton. I'm at the law firm of Thomas R. Raines, LLC. I'm here today representing the applicant and property owner, Galilee uh, Holding, LLC. Uh, before I continue, I just wanted to point out one thing on the agenda um, for the second part of this case, 353-22Z, the applicant is listed as Gallery Holding LLC, but it is in fact the same applicant as 352-22Z, um, which is Galilee Holding. I can see no, that. I, I, I see that uh, that is, we do have a typo uh, with regard to 353-22-Z. We will uh, amend it on the record to reflect that right. the applicant's name is Galilee Holding LLC. In other words, the same applicant as 352-22-Z. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the applicant is currently building a seven dwelling unit building. Uh, it has a seven space parking pad, um, but he has now applied for a revision permit to replace that parking pad with a brick garage. Um, the lot has two hardships, however, affecting this construction. One um, most principal is the shape of the parcel. Um, it has five uneven sides. And secondly, the lot is substandard in length um, and to anticipate um, Commissioner Toya's um, observation, the lot is the same as is the same depth as all the others on the block. Um, however, a portion of it is considerably shorter um, due to that uh, due to part of its site being cut off. Um, uh, because of these factors, in order to construct the garage, the applicant is seeking the variations uh, to reduce the rear yard set back from 30 feet to 2 feet, um, as well as the south side yard set back from 5 feet uh, to 0, the north side set back from 5 feet to 2.67, and also reducing the minimum rear yard open space from 456 square feet to 0. Granting the variations will allow the applicant to er erect this garage. The lot, just for your orientation purposes, is a half block west of Milwaukee Avenue. Um, there is an alley just west of Milwaukee, which runs diagonally. Also, it intersects the northeast corner of the applicant's lot, which for all practical purposes 
clips off that northeast corner um, for what would otherwise be a regularly shaped uh, parcel. Consequently, this east property line uh, measures only 81.9 uh, feet um, for its north-south dimension before it angles off in a northwesterly fashion. As I say, the lot is only 100 feet deep on its longer west, west boundary, which makes it um, 25 feet shorter than the standard lot. Um, as a result of the lot, the slot's irregular shape and its substandard dimensions, the alley frontage isn't wide enough or deep enough to build a garage that conforms with the zoning standards. Um, with that, I'll call uh, the my first witness, Vladimir Galilee. Uh, Vlad, yes. just for orientation, you are the managing member of Galilee Holdings LLC, yes. which is the property owner and applicant for this? Yes. Good. Um, and did I prepare um, an affidavit on your behalf, which you reviewed and signed? Yes. And if I were to continue questioning to you today, would you answer? Um, would your answer to be consistent yes. with uh, that affidavit? Yes. Thank you. Um, can I turn to Chris Dassey now? Yes. yes sir. Chris, you're the architect of record for um, for this proposal. Yes, I am. And was the description I gave uh, accurate describing the lot and the difficulties in placing the garage on it? Yes, you are correct. And did I also prepare an affidavit for you, uh, which you reviewed and signed? Yes, I did. And which did we prepare. submitted to the board? Yes. So if I were to continue questioning to you today, would your answers be consistent with that affidavit? Yes, they would. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, does the board, uh, do you want any further testimony or does the board have any questions? I think we're gonna open it for questions now. Okay. And, um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask the question to the other board members first. Uh, do, do any of the board members have questions? Yes. All right, proceed, uh, uh, Commissioner Esposito. Thank you. Um, could you describe what compelled the, or could the applicant describe what compelled the decision to change the original plan, which I believe was a parking pad for this project? Is that correct? Yes. So can you describe why you no longer would be satisfied with a parking pad that you planned to construct initially? Because uh, building with uh, garage car parking, it's more marketable, safer, and secure for residents. But you, you would have known that before, correct? Um, like when you applied for the permit? Yes. So why are you coming in now with this request rather than when you originally applied for the permit? That's what I'm curious about. I think I just like uh, just lost this mine, and uh, as soon as we start build it in this area, and uh, we decided we have to more secure um, this property because um, I think this is be big help on uh, potential uh, buyers and residents. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You know, on 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 this line of of questioning, and maybe this is for the for the architect. Um, you know, had this decision been made um, before construction, uh, would you would you have needed to build a smaller building in order to to fit the garage? The garage, the building itself is would not be smaller. The issue with the garage is that. 
the garage has additional requirements. For instance, the garage has to push two foot away from the rear property line, pushing closer to the building. Uh, in addition, because the garage has to go lot line to lot line, we are not able to have an, a regular standard exterior trash enclosure. We have to put the trash enclosures within the garage. And then on top of that, the garage itself has wall thicknesses, you know, front and back. So that adds an additional foot of thickness just in the depth of the garage. So all these little factors affect um, why we need a variance for a garage as opposed to just leaving it going straight zoning with a uh, parking pad. Does that make sense? Well, I, I guess um, I, I I think I understand it. You're saying why you need relief now, I think, is, is, is what that answer was. But what I'm saying is, you know, you, you make this plan for a uh, for this building with a parking pad and you, you, you start con construction. Um, and you, you don't need a variation for the for the for the parking pad right correct but um but you you would have needed a variation for the garage and i guess what i'm trying to figure out is you know would the if you wanted to do the garage uh as of right would you have had to had have a smaller building no because currently our building doesn't even touch the exist the building as built um why the plan examiner determined that we needed to have a reduce the rear yard setback to two foot. I don't understand. I mean, we have the rear setback. We have the existing building. We've left it at that point. We have a gap between the building and the and the garage. So the rear yard setback wouldn't have been reduced. Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Yes. Um, can I point out? So the rear yard here is uh, the rear yard setback is required is 30 feet. Um, the portion, the eastern portion, east, yeah, the eastern portion of this garage is 34 feet deep. Um, so regardless of the size of the principal building, uh, this garage would extend into the rear yard, the rear yard space, rear yard setback by four feet. So that's why, I think that's why the examiner um, denied it. Okay, okay. And this is, yeah, go ahead. This is Commissioner Esposito, do we, I, I, do we have a, an aerial photograph? Thank you. Oh. Here we go. Where? Yes. It's an outdated one, but obviously. Uh, oh. That's that's the better one. Thank you. Okay. So I could uh, either the applicant or Mr. Barton uh, sort of describe to us how this fits in with surrounding properties? It is more or less the same dimension, uh, the same depth as the other ones, and um, as the as the existing uh, buildings on the block directly to the west, um, which is um, in the up uh, above in this photograph. Okay. In addition, there is a um, large. Um, if one of these photographs shows the view looking west down the alley. There is a large um, uh, building there, again, built to the alley line with, um, with parking in it. Thank does, you. That, Thank you. does that help? It does. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? I think we have what we need. We'll take it under advisement. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. All right, now 354-22-Z was withdrawn. So we are going to 355-22-Z. 
is 1518 West Granville. I can see we've got Councillor Borstein. Uh, and if you are here in support or objection, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. And I think we've got your witnesses as well. Great. So let me let me get them sworn in. Uh, Ariel Vaca, could you say your name and address, please? Yes, my name is Ariel Vaca. I'm with the Board of Education with address at 42 West Madison Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60602. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. And thank you. And Chad Hooper, could you state your name and address, please? Yeah, Chad Hooper, 333 South Des Plaines, Chicago, Illinois, 60661. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Borstein, uh, there are no uh, objectors have raised their hands, so you are free to do the short form. Terrific. We will definitely do that. I know it's been a long day already. Um, so again, Scott Borstein with the Law Offices of Neil and Leroy here on behalf of the Chicago Board of Education. Um, as you have already sworn in our witnesses and joined by Ariel Vaca from the board and Chad Hooper, our project engineer. Um, this is a, a, a terrific uh, open space and play ground project for the Haight Elementary School at 1518 West Granville. Um, the, the vast majority of the project is, is uh, permitted, but, and, and if you want more detail, Chad can certainly go into it, but we're installing a couple benches and a wood bridge that goes over a bioswale that's in the western portion of the lot. And just those items only are the ones that require the variation. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it was basically, I think, 6.7 feet we needed to go down to. Um, and, and where the setback is, by the way, it also abuts an alley. Um, so it's not like we're uh, you know on top of any other uh, neighboring properties. So um, the project, uh, you know, has, we've not received any kind of objections from the community. The project was announced by the alderman back at a ribbon cutting ceremony for another project at the school. And then subsequently, of course, we sent out our notices, but we, the alderman also sent out a, uh, a community blast to everybody on his uh, uh, mailing list notifying them of the project, the fact that we need this variation, and also advising them about the time of the hearing. Um, so I think we've canvassed hopefully enough for Commissioner Toya, um, our, the community. And um, so I, with that, I'll, let me just call our witnesses then and, and do the short form uh, swearing or uh, a testimony. Thank you. Great. Uh, Ariel, we'll start with you. Um, yeah. uh, you're familiar with the project and the uh, affidavit and conclusions and findings of fact that we submitted on behalf of the board and uh, which we submitted uh, to the board. And if you were to testify further today, would your testimony be consistent with the findings and conclusions of that affidavit? Yes. Terrific. And Chad, again, you're the project engineer for this. You designed this project uh, and we prepared uh, an affidavit on your behalf, uh, again, with findings and conclusions that addressed all the standards required for obtaining a variation. And if you were to testify today, would your testimony be consistent with that affidavit? Yes. Terrific. Um, we'll turn it back to the board if there's any other questions then. Questions from the board? Uh, Chair and Commissioner Don just had a question. In terms of the selection use of artificial turf, could you just walk us through where that's located and why that decision was made? Chad, you want to go ahead and address that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, the artificial turf is that hatch area that had kind of little crosses in it. And then um, 
there's a, a raised mound with those with those contours right there. And then the path through that artificial turf is just really for different colors, which 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 leads you from the existing playground to the south and to the, the proposed bridge um, that leads into that goes over a bioswale and then leads into like the natural area that we're trying to maintain to the north. And the, the real main reason for improving this area is because if, if you may have seen in the previous photos, the area is just completely worn down grass, uh, didn't have really great drainage. And um, that was really the reason for providing the artificial turf and giving, giving the kids uh, another place to run around. Does the turf actually improve drainage? It does, yes. It's permeable. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right, no other questions. We will take this one under advisement. Terrific, thank you. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank, thank you. you as well. Thank you. Okay, next up is 356-22-Z. This is 1810 North Orleans. If you're here in support or objection, please raise your hand and we will get you promoted. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Councillor uh, Citrone? Yes, thank you. Uh, um, who are your, who are your witnesses today? Uh, I hope they're on after, I, I I know you've had a very long hearing. Annette Madonis and Tom Niemick, our architect. Right, let me see, let me see. I, I see Todd, I'm looking for Annette Madonis. I'm here. Oh, excellent. Okay, excellent. great. Thank you, Annette. I know it's been a long day. Okay, uh, great. Um, let me let me get your um, chairman. Oh, do we hold on? Do we have objectors on this one? Yes, I promoted. Uh, Mr. To chairman, other hello. Yes. Uh, my name is Sach Kubo, Sach Mary Kubo. I have submitted an objection letter. However, I believe my questions were answered. So at this point, I do not have any further questions or objections. I believe uh, they have raised the. Uh, the fence height, and also they did a satisfactory um, explanation to my questions. Oh, okay. So, and so also, I would like to acknowledge that um, <coughs> I received the most help from uh, Mr. Taylor Ness at Timmy, um, I should say, Alderman uh, Nusen's uh, office as well. So, but I'm sorry, I apologize. I did not the technicality of uh, what I should do, so I just stayed on. No, that's 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 fine. So, so if I understand you correctly. Uh, you were originally going to object, but then after having some conversations, uh, you're withdrawing your objection. Is that is that? I do correct? not know. I would still like my uh, objection letter, or rather, the public opinion letter, to be recorded. Okay. For the, however, I do not have any further questions, nor do I um, have the necessity for it. Okay. At well, this point. All right. So just so just stay on, because um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the applicant's case. Uh, they'll put their case on, and then um, uh, we will turn to you as the objector to state your objection. And uh, if you want to ask any questions of the applicant, you are free to do so. Um, and then we'll go back to the applicant for uh, rebuttal and closing, okay? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. However, what do I say if I don't have any objections anymore? You can just say at that time, oh, I, I no longer have an objection. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for everyone for uh, driving this No, no, this no, out. you're fine. Thank you. I'll mute myself. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, uh, Councilor Citrone, let me get your uh, witnesses uh, sworn. Um, 
Anat Madanis, could you please state your name and address, please? Uh, yes, Anat Madanis, 1840 North Orleans, Chicago, Illinois, 60614. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. And uh, Todd Nemiak, could you state your name and address, please? Yes, uh, Todd Nemiak, um, Esmond J. Architects Principal. Um, I live at 204 West St. James in Arlington Heights. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. And I can see that we do have uh, Taylor Ness on. Uh, would you like to speak now or, or at the end? It's your, your call. I can speak now. Um, for the record, my name is Taylor Nessie, Chief Director of Zoning and Urban Development in Alderman Knudsen's office in the 43rd Ward. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do, Chairman. Thank you. Um, we had submitted an initial letter of support after review of this project was completed by the Landmarks PRC Committee and the Old Town Triangle Association in 2021, I do believe. Um, and we had submitted a letter when Alderman Smith was in office when the initial application for this variation was filed. We have no objection. We support the work that they've done to minimally alter a historic structure that has a very unique <laughs> configuration on its lot. Um, we appreciate the fact that they've done most of the work internally to accommodate this unique condition of the property. And yesterday I did have the opportunity to reply to Ms. Kubo and her objections and give a little bit more context to her um, to kind of explain the work that the applicant and their the team has done to really do a, an amazing job to pervert, preserve this, um, this property. So we support it. I reviewed it with uh, Alderman Knudsen to refresh that stance of support. And we are excited to see this get underway. Thank you. Great. Uh, well, thank you for, uh, for coming in and, and expressing your support. Um, with, with that, let's uh, turn it over to uh, Councillor Citrone. Uh, since we may have a, a potential ob objector here, let's just go, you know, go through, put your case on, have your witnesses testify, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll turn it over to the objector and see if she has, uh, still has any objection. Thank you. I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Again, Bernard Citrin from the law firm of Thompson Coburn, representing the owners and applicant here today. Um, as noted, um, we have a very unique property in the fact that the house is located almost entirely with what would otherwise be the rear yard of this property. Um, we also have sort of a, a unique um, set of requests here. We are asking for a reduction of the minimum rear yard from 35 feet to 2.5 feet. And the reason for that is we're not going farther back with the, with the building, we're bowing up. But since the building is already located within the rear yard, we need to ask for that variation. Um, the south side yard setback um, is asking for a zero setback, but as we pointed out to both the neighbor who is on the call today, and to everybody else, um, we aren't building anything there. Um, we The only place to provide off-street parking is in that south side yard, but because parking is not a permitted exemption to the side yards, we have to ask for a zero. I think it's important to note for the record, because this was a concern that was brought up by the neighbor, which is that we are not building what, what you see on our drawings is all that can be built there based on these variations. We cannot add to the building and move it any closer. In fact, if I'm reading the drawings correctly, we're actually taking down an existing staircase that intrudes into that south side yard. So we're actually opening up that area a bit more. One of the concerns that was raised was a fence that was being placed at the front portion um, where the cars would park. Um, that was a request from the Old Town Triangle Association to screen any cars that were parking there. We, of course, agreed to it. I'm not sure exactly why we had a 7.5 foot fence there during the whole time, but we have reduced that now to six feet, which is a permitted um, fence. With that, uh, Todd, I'd like to call you as our witness to go through uh, some of the outline. Uh, if you could first state your name and address. Certainly. Uh, Todd Nemec, SMNJ Architects, um, 204 West St. James, Arlington Heights. Um, this uh, project, the existing so building... Let me, stop you, one question. Let me stop you one question. Um, okay. You are a licensed architect in the state of Illinois, are you not? I am. Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Yes. Um, 
this this project is primarily to reuse this existing building on this uh, kind of atypical location on the site. It's all the way back. And so we are taking down an existing um, stair that is in disrepair and not structurally uh, in good shape to provide this uh, side yard uh, parking area um, just at grade. But otherwise we're staying within the building with the exception of dormering up a little bit in the rear uh, to insert a little bit of a mezzanine in the uh, within the building um, proper. But we've presented this to Old Town Triangle. We've uh, shown them to their satisfaction that the dormers will not be as tall as the ridge of the existing roof and that everything's set back as much as possible and is going to try to be as, uh, have as li little visibility from the, uh, from Orlean Street than um, is possible. So we've complied, I think, with all those requests with Old Town. We went through landmarks and we certainly want to make sure that the neighbor's um, concerns are uh, addressed. Um, so the, the variation we're asking in terms of the ver vertical height um, at the rear, that is the minimum variation that we could ask and still be able to um, create the building that the owners and applicant need uh, for their purposes. Correct. And you've, in fact, reduced everything down to what is the minimum that would be otherwise needed. Correct. So we're not really increasing the footprint of the building um, other than the one dormer on the south side yard, but the remaining, we are in effect taking down the stairway to allow for that. Yeah, we're at a net reduction in the FAR, if I remember correctly. So it's actually somewhat of a smaller building um, overall. Yes. Um, I think you briefly uh, talked about, you did bring this through the city historic preservation division. Yes. And they yes, signed off on everything that's in the, the uh, shown here now. That is true. Yes. Um, can you br briefly describe why the strict compliance with the applicable minimum lot area standards will create practical difficulties or particular hardship for this property? Um, the viable reuse of this building um, does not, you know, in its current configuration is not, uh, not attainable. Um, we need to, you know, the, it's um, a hardship not to have off street parking in, in this particular area where parking can be a challenge. And um, we're trying to preserve, uh, we're preserving the historic elements on the front of the facade entirely and we, uh, where we can't um, save the existing materials, we're going to replicate them. So we are staying consistent with the neighborhood and um, this, this, um, this reduction is, allowed, is really being requested to allow us to keep the building where it's located. On a lot. And would it have been viable to tear down the building um, and still meet all the standards, especially the historic standards in this neighborhood? Um, we did not go there, but no, uh, I don't think we, you could. And in or in the only place otherwise to have provided um, off street parking would have actually been in the building itself from the rear, and that would have significantly reduced the available living space in the building to the point where it would no longer be viable for the owners. Correct. It's it's a it's a challenging building to just get the exiting to work because the footprint is so small. It's it's almost the size of a it's like a, a larger coach house type structure is really what it it looks like. I've, are there other structures? Are there other coach houses like this in the in the community in the neighborhood on this block? Um, there's no primary structures that look like this that I'm aware of. Um, and I didn't really evaluate whether there were other coach houses okay. proper in the neighborhood. Will the variations if granted alter the essential character of the neighborhood? No. And is it your testimony that the building is compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of site planning other than its location, building scale and project design? That is true, it is. Um, will the proposed variations impair an adequate supply of light and air to adjacent property or increase the danger of fire or endanger the public safety? It will not engender additional uh, danger to the public. It will actually reduce um, the setbacks of the current structure somewhat with the demolition of the existing stair. So that will effectively not um, affect light and air to the neighboring structure? Correct. Um, and pursuant to section 17105500, um, will this uh, design help to maintain the orderly and compatible land use and development pattern, patterns 
by utilizing an existing structure in the neighborhood in keeping with the FAR and height standards of the subject district? It will. And it will also preserve the character of the subject historic district? It will. Any, would there be any negative effects that you would uh, uh, testify to regarding traffic, public safety, or property values if this is constructed as noted? No, I, I think that this building has been unoccupied for quite some time, and I think that this will be a, a good use for the neighborhood at large and the applicant as well. Um, I have nothing further of our architect. Um, do you want to ask questions or should we proceed to the next witness? Let's, uh, let, let's go through uh, your case and then we'll see if there's questions. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Madanis, could you please state your name and address for the record? Uh, Annette Madanis, 1814 North Orleans, Chicago, Illinois, 60614. And you are one of the beneficiaries of the trust that owns the property? Correct. You own the home to the north and you purchased the subject property that, so your adult child and their family could move into their home and have also to have more room for visiting family members? Yes. So yes, you, will be, you will be living next door to your child if, that, uh, at, at this, yes. if this goes through. Um, will that allow you to support your children now and be near them uh, yes. as you age? Yes. So this is needed to basically not just provide for your children, but also to help provide for your future at this location. Correct. Correct. And you've stayed, you've lived in this neighborhood for 37 years and you'd be like, you, you would want to stay there, which would otherwise be difficult if your uh, children weren't living right next to you. That, that is, that is correct. Um, and you were part of the process going through both the neighborhood with the neighbors and with the historic preservation and you fully support whatever changes that they required uh, to the floor, to the site plan and floor plan. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and you have agreed that whatever, if, if these variations are granted, um, specifically that side, side side yard or south side yard variation, that's it. You're only putting, you're only asking for that for the car. You can't, you understand that you cannot build anything further in that south side other than what's shown on these plans. Yes, I do. And the fence that we're adding in front that is not going to be connected to your neighbor's property in any form or way, correct? Correct, it's we're not. With that, I have no further questions um, of the witness. Okay, um, any questions from the board at this time? Uh, one thing I do want to just state on the record uh, is that you, you did, did acknowledge that um, the fence is going to be six feet high, so we're going to amend the uh, the re the agenda uh, to reflect that the the fence will be six feet, not uh, seven point five. And we had submitted a revised plan showing that notated on it, so we're fine with that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, all right, let me go to uh, Miss Kubo. Uh, Miss Kubo, having having heard uh, the applicant's case, do you still have uh, any objection? Oh, uh, you're you're uh, muted right now. But let me. Thank also you. I was, I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if I should mute, unmute myself. Yes, I heard your question. Oh, let me before you uh, speak any further. Let me swear you in. Uh, could you state your uh, name and address, please? Yes, uh, Sachi Maria Kubo. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Did you say uh, DOB? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was my age. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, 1806 North Orleans Street, Chicago, okay. Illinois, 60614. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, so the question posed to you now is, uh, having heard the applicant's case, uh, do you still have any objection? No, I do not about um, what they're asking for now. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I do appreciate um, learning about uh, what they're trying to do. I, it was very unclear in the application of RBH, and I, I really appreciate learning uh, details. Excellent. Excellent. Um, um, I do have one question, if um, I'm allowed to ask. Sure. Go ahead. I recall um, uh, Mrs. Medanis, and I believe it was either her attorneys and architects, I do not remember who uh, specifically, uh, mentioning that they were planning to install 
a sprinkler system because they do have a car parked right there, right like, inches from uh, my coach house. I do have a coach house in the back. Um, I I could not. I don't know how to read the plans, but I could not tell um, where if it's still there or they took it down from the plan. Todd, do you is this at all? I can speak. That yes. Um, yes, we're required with the new code. We're allowed to maintain one exit in the building if we sprinkler the building. So we are going to put a residential sprinkler system within the building. It really is not related to the parking in any way that I'm aware of um, or familiar with, um, but we are going to definitely sprinkle the building itself. Yeah. Uh, Todd, I think I may, oh, sorry, am I allowed to speak? I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Todd. I think I met you somewhere before. I, so that mm -hmm. was probably you, but thank you so much. It's uh, really good to know that, um, uh, the detail. Thank sure. you. And I appreciate Annette for um, doing that as well. Okay, um, so uh, so your your uh, your objection is, you don't have an objection uh, for this for this project. Um, we've heard the applicant's case. Do does the board have any other uh, questions? Mr. Chairman, if I may be clear, I'm sorry. I have to be. Sure. Uh, I, I used to be paralegal, so I am a little bit detail oriented. Sure. Um, I just want to uh, state that I have no objections to uh to their application this application yes correct and that's what we're here for that's all yes, that we're thank here you for. um okay uh and it does not sound like we have any other questions from the board so we will take this matter under advisement thank you thank you thank, thank you very you much so i wish everyone a wonderful weekend thank, thank, you. thank you enjoy the thank lovely you. weather mm -hmm. may i now uh leave the uh, session yes you may Thank you so very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Thank you so much. Okay, Thank I you. think at um, at this time, uh, we are going to have a recess so that the board can get some lunch. Uh, we will reconvene at, um, let's say, uh, two th uh, say 225. Uh, uh, so, uh, I move that we uh, that we recess to 225. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. We are in recess until 225.